the best civilization this year because we are jumping into day number two elimination of the hippo the high day with all great players and we will see them start out here on bedouins and we can see a lot of weird points here on the minimap moving around and Pito having even some idle villagers he is starting with the mill and we start in fuel age so he's building an early tc as well and yeah everyone is playing the chinese not too surprising but surprising that everyone agreed on it at the top right we can see a timer if this timer runs down the player with the lowest points will get eliminated at the moment it would be doubt uh, not having scouted a lot and bedouins you all know it guys not very easy to wall you have a lot of Shawfish, the fastest uh, food income a villager can have. Warrior still without his CC. Now jumping to higher points. Stark without his CC now as well. And Yuri is very late, but now in it as well. So we will always have to take a look who has the lowest point and who has the highest points here. And it will be very interesting strategy wise. The starting feudal age to just create the action a bit bit earlier. Um, uh, it doesn't affect it too much, but maybe castle age timings of like two minutes earlier is absolutely possible. We might even see people reaching castle age on those settings at like 14 minute mark. And then you can get out a lot of knights, maybe some monk rush. Yesterday we saw like six players playing Chinese. I think one Mayans, one Japanese even. And the Japanese guy went for an interesting monk rush and forced the guy who he monk rushed to be eliminated because he really couldn't take it. So players who aren't like super loved in the community and like everyone ha has a like love-hate relationship with MBL for example. I wouldn't be surprised to see doubt. Just go YOLO one game into the face of MBL. But, oh, he doesn't even have the greatest start. So let's take a look who is next to each other. We have Warrior going for Sheep and Deer. That's super, super bad. Uh, he's going for way slower food income than he should go. So he will be the slowest for sure. To the top, we have Leary. Then we have MBL to the right-hand side. Then we have a long time nothing. And ACCM is pretty much on his own. And yeah, no one in the right-hand side corner. And now we have horsepower here. And just quickly next to him, we have Tito, so we will see some engagement over there, guaranteed. And we have in the left-hand side corner, Doubt and Stark. And some Spectre says MBL will be out of gold. Um, let's see if that is true. MBL, indeed, he has to run quite a bit to get some gold. Um, remember guys it's only 40 minutes so if you have like two safe gold spots you're fine till the end of the game unless you're like having the fastest blue mayor and go play Marians but even then you have it longer so maybe ad sex would be a biggest problem but it's still like ha taking like long term approach like where uh, securing a lot of gold spots or relics isn't very important on those settings it's mainly like Get your ego rolling and then strategize a bit like how do I not get last? How do I maybe snack in some money? Because yesterday we had a player, he was eliminated in the fifth game, I believe. So he got fourth and he didn't have a single dollar in the end. So that really hurt. And yeah, so that doesn't really help you to play a lot of games and not get a single dollar in your pocket. Okay, for now still a lot of fishing going on. Let's take a look at village account down actually had. The slow sky probably from all those players. <laughs> and we have ACCM a bit behind and Warrior a bit behind. Still confused that he doesn't know that shawfish is the fastest food. Seems like he never watched a lot of my streams. And he might get punished for it. Uh, did they all pick Chinese? Yes, it is hidden pick but since you don't start with the TC and Chinese start with three extra villagers that means your TC can get up earlier and sometimes it is tough to really get the food income but since you have so much food close to your TC and the fastest food possible you have a solid 
to village elite over any other civilization and those 50 seconds then yeah give you the advantage and give you the first chance oh and Leary is the guy who's going for the military first and we will uh, put off that relic count and later on we will put uh, on the fishing ship count on maps like nomad Leary now with three military no one else uh, but Tito, I hear is stable and stables are super good on those settings because you know every percent vision you already have gives you 10 percent uh, 10 points that means if you scout 100 percent of the map you have 1k extra and 1k extra just guarantees you to have yeah first 20 dollars here but since a lot of players will scout at 100 percent it's not really possible on this map because of those edges here uh, that could be a strategy of the toe that she just goes for two scouts and heavy scouting he already sees a lot of the map and therefore he's leading in points but for example if Leary is getting in with all his archers into the wood line and close to the shore fishy of MBL he might do a lot of killing and if he kills like five six villagers and still has a lot of army I believe he would take the lead warrior still the lowest but that's not important for now. We still have roughly 30 minutes to go here. I'm so interested how the players will play this out. Yesterday we had a long strategy talk. Hawkspawn on the way to Castle H and now six archers coming in. Oh, and MBL has no idea. Let's switch into his point of view. Oh, and the archer's going directly to the TC, and he only has two villagers in the TC though, so we will not really kill an archer. Let's see, yeah, most of them still have full HP, and now the killing will begin. Let's see how Liri will play it out. MBL will lose at least one villager, will be, I think, will end with three. Let's see how great the micro is. Oh, Liri not really chasing that one, so we'll stay at two villagers. Needs to run those to the top here. Oh, actually, he's running them into the TC of Liri here. What is going on? MBL now losing at least one, maybe losing more, and he needs to go back at the same time. He's still getting attacked over here. Those, this is so scrappy. And now we can see Leary together with Tito leading, and Tito going for the full scout. That's the main reason. Leary needs to go for more scouting as well to catch that small lead. And MBL just putting himself so far behind. Let's take a look. He is at 20, but just compare that with Tito. He is thir at 30. Doubt already on the way to Castle Eight, so that will drastically change. And they are now trying to go for a defensive archery range. Obviously, you don't need to build a barracks. Going for blacksmiths as well. Trying to go for scrum defense probably. So it's on the way to Castle Eight now, and yeah, we can see Yuri with this aggression. Um, yeah, really going at it, and MBL simply because he didn't click Castle Eight yet. Most of the other players are in Castle Eight, so he did click. He still has the highest points because he didn't invest the resources, but yeah, he will struggle a lot to get Yeah, not eliminated in this very first game because his castle age timing will be roughly 10 minutes later than of other players As you can see horsepower already in the, in the castle age now adding two extra TC's The toast still on scouts Leary now taking the lead here might want to go for some more killing but for now, he's just running through the map. And let's take a look at exploration of Tato here. And here you can see he sees a lot of the map, but not going for the yeah, only exploration strategy. He seems to be very active, or oh, actually everyone is standing at the moment, but he was very active before that. On the other side, we have no real engagement. Oh, what happens here? Who lost that villager? Could it like doubt himself? Did he delete a villager? I'm not really sure. So doubt is going for the boom approach. One extra TC, two extra TCs, but two scouts coming in. So that TC will be denied for shizzle. Uh, but sending in more villagers. Let's see, no tower of stock here. He's just uh, killing those two villagers and is happy with that. Maybe even only getting one of them because the TC will get up eventually. Um, now Tatori's Castle H ACCM as well. Without trying to micro some, but will be will be very ugly for him. Let's see how he's doing it. 8 HP on that villager and over here we have 
16 HP and stock is retreating so now losing one villager there isn't the worst thing getting the TC up now it's totally fine so Leary with the highest points might get some more kills let's see where is are all his archers let's switch into his point of view oh, and he found a lot of sheep here <laughs> and yeah he's going for a lot of exploration trying to push his points only three minutes left and going for some raiding against warrior and archers obviously perform very well in those tight areas here and warrior oh he even added the plus one defense now going for bow saw so yeah those archers won't do too too much damage against yeah there's three defensive armor mbl on the way to castle age and i need to take a look i have a guy in the background who promised me to take screenshots every time at the 20 minute mark so if it if i miss it or it's very close uh, we will always have a decision here and take a look now village is being pulled even to try to engage this leary and Tito seems to be the one with quite a reasonable start he already has three extra to see so up to four and is scouting quite a bit as well Liri's attack now being shut down and yeah fighting against knights will be super tough for him plus one defense on the knights really helping out one minute 20 more let's take a look at the toes map and look at all this exploration he really knows how to push his points more scouts running around even the sheep so many sheep it's incredible and feels like he might snag the win and quite easily actually 300 points ahead Here we now clicked up the castle age, so that means he's not really taking any more tries on getting that. Because if you click castle age, your points drop 100 points, uh, or your score drops 100 points. That makes a bit more sense. And now, yeah, we don't really need to take a screenshot. Tit so, taking the first $20 of this high day here. That. Stark in second place after trying to take Doubt here for quite a bit. Now going for the Monkers as well. Doubt has a defensive stable. Maybe Doubt Castles could really help out MBL. Let's take a look where does he want to build it. Over here would be the worst thing ever. And indeed, he's trying to go for an aggressive one. Doubt again. Doubt Castle after Doubt Castle. Now in range of the TC. Is he building a knight? Not really. He's out of gold and some light cap coming in now as well. The Magnolts though a bit too close to the TC and more villagers will go down. Let's take a look. Still both Magnolts will... Oh, a bit out of range and 14 HP and still alive. And Doubt now dropping down to lowest points here. One Knight coming in. Monk should start the conversion. So Doubt, I think he will not get that castle up. It's so weird how he does this every single game. Doubt just putting himself back so, so much. <sighs> Same time we have ACM going for full boom. Kind of as we expected, being so far away. Horsepower going for crossbowman defense. And now have Larry getting his castle. He's going for crossbowman and bot can arrow. Now another attempt of sending more villagers in. So many more going down. He's only at 50 villagers and will lose more. The Mangano micro. He should stay on stand ground. Uh, let's see. Oh, should repair. Okay, at least one Mangano down. And now another scout coming in, trying to get another convert. Let's see how that will go. Magna, oh, actually killing his own monk. And Doubt sending more villagers to the front. And that's so Doubt and MBL must be so happy that Doubt is still in this tournament here. And yeah, to save the day for him because yeah, MBL is probably the safe castle at home. And he would struggle there a lot. Doubt, now 60% of his castle if this castle go, goes up he still is pretty safe but yeah losing so many villages is just ridiculous let's see stark is now going back not 100 really sure why could have went for at least one more shot now we can see stark i mean spot number four and we see horsepower now going for the attack against Tacho, but he walled quite a bit remember it's no war mod so no palisades or storm walls are possible but castles and some houses might help you out quite a bit. Without got his castle up, 
did now stabilize and now it will be a run for doubt against yeah MBL a bit warrior not looking too great but he has three TCs up has manuals out as well so I think he looks solid maybe Leary with only two and a half TCs so far might struggle a bit let's see about that now trying to expand another villager of Teton now coming in maybe snacking one villager oh might very well happen <coughs> There's a lot of doubt maybe being lost. So what is MBL doing? Two, three extra TCs here and one sun TC. So he's playing with four TCs, he's going for two canoes. You're running around in the middle of the map, not doing too much. Cannot really get the damage here. He's start now with this cast as well. So Tom going for the defense upgrade. That means he wants to defend against those crossbow masses. Let's take a look how the Magnet of Tato can defend here against horsepower. Maybe he wants to go for the ground attack against those crossbow man. Uh, it seems like oh some ground attack but missing. Can he do it a bit better this time? Now going in close to the TC. Lots of damage on the crossbow man, but still I think he will get it. Another Magna should be out here. Let's see if he does that a bit better. But now he is getting in range of the castle as well. I think Horsepower might lose all his crossbow man here without actually killing the Magna. Ground attack needs to be here. Shoot! Oh! Missing it! And yeah, beautiful dodge there by horsepower. Let's see. He's actually getting out of life quite a bit, trying to go for... Oh! What a ground attack! That's <laughs> oh, killing so much. And look at the points. He's over 1k ahead now. SEM and Stark both on the way to Imperial Age, so that will spell trouble for Doubt as well. Stark can start the trap wall here, but what a beautiful ground attack. Knight coming out and that's clear, but at the same time, Horsepower did get up the castle and yeah, can now keep on pressuring Tato. Clicked up to the Imperial Age as well and so did Horsepower, so that will be a tough engagement over here. And honestly, I like this so much more already players yeah just booming so much more playing it so much more aggressively and yeah can just use the 40 minutes they have to much more efficiency than the players yesterday so yeah I think we will be in for a treat remember guys it will be seven games we will lose a player every game and the last 1v1 will play it without any time limits so we might see a great 1v1 in the end with uh, interesting civilizations as well. Some two canoe raids here uh, yeah, from Doubt coming in. Not 100% sure how effective that will be. Stark missed the wall. Yeah, and Stark has enough to defend that, so that won't be a problem. A lot of upgrades going on. Who else is on the way to Imperial Age? We have ACM already reaching Imperial Age. Still have a lot of gold. He is having an archery range to get some tempering action running for him. And he will go for two news. Has two castles, is getting all the upgrades. And that will be tough for MBL maybe. And oh, at the same time we have Warrior pushing here. And yeah, a lot of Mangles lost here against Liri. Liri now trying to come in, but his force is very weak. Knights now should clear this up and Liri, he might drop very far behind. He lose that Magnal for sure. Warrior. Let's see. He is losing that Magnal. The Magnal could have been so effective against that small tight choke area. But so it's the question how will Doubt perform here? We are looking into 10 more minutes in this very first game here. And Leary is yeah, defending quite reasonable as it seems. But Warrior, they're neck and neck. I think it will be really if ACM decides to kill MBL, then he would snag the first, um, yeah, probably the, the highest points. So that's a good option for him. And yeah, we have 1v1 going over here, which should go heavily in favor of Stark, and 1v1 going over here, which looks quite even, maybe a bit better for Tato if I look at the points, but if I look at the castle and the map control, a bit better for horsepower, if you ask me. I'm going for Pikeman Tech as well. So, and another one we want over here. Uh, very interesting. Now, doubt casting himself into elimination, maybe. 
What is ACM doing? Still no attack. Oh, and ACM is going for horsepower. I completely missed that. I saw some points, uh, dots in, in the edge, and uh oh, now horsepower needs to run. Uh, getting cornered is something so bad for him. That means MBL most likely will not get eliminated, but it will be the decision between down and horsepower. Oh, nice shots here against Leary with all those magnets in range of the castle as well. Magnets being microed back to the news coming in as well. Not having any range upgrades yet for Sark. Doubt finally losing that, you see. Trying to get another castle up. Has very under upgraded to canoes as well. And that will be extremely tough here for Horsepower to really save this game. And he's expanding towards the middle, but that's where everyone can attack you. And only 100 years left. We're getting into the 10th phase now. Tito clearing up all the traps of Horsepower. Not 100 percent sure if Horsepower really wanted to attack the side and continue to really make enemies uh, with Tito because he has enough enemies on the right hand side. Start now going for cavalry attack even. And that will spell troubles for doubt. So I believe it will be the decision between horsepower and doubt. And for the lead I would say it will be Stark, ACM and Tito. Let's see how this game will continue. Sorry for that, and we are back live. So, uh, still in trouble is doubt here. Horsepower as well, but yeah, the attack not too strong. We only have one trap out by ACCM, and Tito not going for too much as well. He is going for mainly light cap. And now they are raiding down as well, which is looking so bad for him. So, we will see all the three players in the north most likely. Yeah, taking it into the next game, we have Stark, ACCM, and Tito. Trying to go for the push. Maybe ACM should consider fighting MBL. He is only now clicking to Imperial Age, only 50%. So that will be tough for him. Will stay in Imperial Age for 4 minutes in this game. The toe is going for more red. But is Lightcap really the unit you want to have in the long run? But I don't see any gold spots for him there. So that's probably the only thing he could do. Now we really didn't look into that all this time. And yeah, going for Mass Lightcap is the only option that Tito has. Now going for champion line as, as well, that's pretty weird. He's going for more castles, but still without gold. That was the only gold spot he had. That's why he spent it so fast and doubt is really in trouble. Only down to 80 pop here. Stark is going for more and more upgrades. What can doubt really do? He's not expanding too well. And uh, that's looking so tough for him. And... Horsepower is building a beautiful base here in the middle. Look at that. 5 TC is up, 2 castles up. And he really is safe enough with it. So that's something that Doubt should have done as well. We're now down to 50 years. 4 more minutes to play. Now we're going for the camel tech as well. Stark is killing Doubt so much. That means a lot of points for him. ACCM it did kill a lot of horsepower. But stop that. And now maybe. Where is ACM? He's going towards the middle trying to get some kills over there. But maybe an engagement here. Doubt against Tito. ACM against Tito, I mean. And that should be a bit better for Tito, I feel. Very weird. 10 plus 4 defense, though. Uh, Chukunus maybe in the end should clear it up. But it was very cost inefficient for ACM. But point efficient, I believe for him so that that's what counts in those games it's really weird to judge and decide what fights to take especially if you only have like two or three more minutes left the toe is still the pointy but stark taking it over now still going for mass light cav and he's killing doubt doubt for sure will be eliminated it's now only a run who gets the next money where money we are down to 30 years the toe now in the um 
<laughs> yeah, GG doubt, GG he says, and he even resigns, that means he is out of that, but now we are still looking at, he was getting the 20 next dollars, horsepower pretty happy with losing all his base, but he rebuilt quite just in time, so that was pretty well done by him, and now we see who will get the 20 dollars here, we still have 20 years left, will it be Stark or will it be Tinto, that's a big question, maybe even ACM, if he is taking a bit, uh, good engagement, where are all the armies? Let's go into Doubt's point of view and try to figure that out. Some took a news here in the middle. The MBL is going for some. HCM is going for some as well. Leary and... Warrior well, we just going for a not very important engagement over here. And at the moment we have Stark being ahead in point. And yeah, MBL now complaining about Leary's threat there, MBL therefore completely out of the game and couldn't really compete for the first place. We still have Stark leading in points, only 8 more years, not really sure if we can see any engagement. Stark is sending everything home, maybe wants to get some more kills against Warrior here. It's still super close, only 400 points, dividing them to Toe now, cancelling everything he had in store. Stark has a lot of upgrades, should cancel all of them, only 3 more years. Let's see how this will go, Tato is trying to go for it. It's so so close 40 points 50 points zero years and in the end ooh, with 50 points difference to Joe is taking second place uh, behind Stark so $20 for Tito $20 for Stark and Doubt is eliminated out of this tournament. What a clutch ending here and I would have loved to see a big fight but Stark rightfully so didn't take any engagement here with Cavaliers against the Camels so we can see that it was desperately trying to go for some more raids, did cancel all those upgrades, but in the end it didn't really, um, yeah, it wasn't really enough. And yeah, doubt kill stats, it was just so, such doubt castle again, and that was just such a big, big mistake. And yeah, feels bad, man. Let's edit the title for the next game because now for the next game we only have seven players left. Interesting stuff. And players are ready and players are happy to go. Next map will be Oasis. And that should be interesting. And we have Doubt being eliminated. With Zero dollars. We have Tito going for the sweet 20. And we have Stark going for 20 as well. And let's see. Uh, obviously, everyone picking China, so that won't be the toughest thing for me ever. Um, and they can't pick it again, which is maybe a problem for Nomad later on. So they kind of have to pick Persians there. And from here on, still every game we will award the $40, $20 at the 20 minute mark, $20 at the end. And this should be pretty interesting. Let's see a lot of chatting going on, but that's only because yesterday we had like three spectators in the room. Today we have 50. And yeah, game has started and we will talk each other pretty soon. Game number two, now on an Aces, still same settings, still same players.
Merchants have a huge bonus that the TCs work faster in Feudal Age, and since we're starting in Feudal Age, that is very important. Okay guys, let's jump into game number two. It is now Oasis still seven players. And let's see what they picked as civilizations. We have to tell. Playing with the Celts. We have Lily playing with Britons. Interesting choice. We have ACM going with Marians. We have MBL playing Persians. We have Horsepower with Persians as well. Stark playing with Spanish. Well, we are playing with Celts and Tito, as we saw before. Celts as well. Should be pretty interesting. Let's see how they're positioned. So, we have Tito. To his Dows will be a CCM. Then we have Horsepower. Come around Lily. Then Warrior. He does not have access to water yet. Then we have MBL. Um, Pretty far away, and then we have stock. Let's take a look. Map size is indeed for six players, like it should be. <clears throat> uh, we're starting through the late, so Persians have a nice advantage here. We're using the villagers a bit faster, so we should see them pull ahead quite a bit. As you can see, already a slight advantage for them. To know that take effect so early and let's take a look how many percentages are, are 10 in pure late that's sweet oh now going for the wall here with three house walls um could have went for those as well and for a lot of scouting and let's see how they were played out nearly last time did a pretty good job of going for the early archers and killing the guy and now it's very easy to find wood lines as well and since you can't really wall it's pretty much impossible to protect your wood lines properly for example MBL who has problems with one of his boars will struggle a lot like if he gets archer related or even scout rush um, he has no chance to defend and wall his villagers yeah he can build a defensive tower but Building defensive towers when six archers are fletching are already near woodline, not really an option. Zark has a bit of a better spot here and can easily wall in his stone and wood, but even then, berries and gold very exposed. Every one going for four woods this far. 
Hands power now going for the stable. And there is going for the archery range. Remember, since you're starting Feudal Age and already have Loom, you're starting with basically 100 gold. So you can build one more archer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, without gold on gold. Um, thank you so much for work for Ice Cream. Uh, for always copying the settings. One day, um, I will get a bot, including that. But for now, um, all my love that I would put into the bot goes to you. Cheers, mate. Um, Summer Wars now coming in for several players, and we are going for it. Okay, let's see. Military count. Horsepower, the first one to get higher than one. There's a lot of idle villagers though. What's really going on here? You see, very scrappy. <laughs> Copying, I type super fast. Uh, yeah, well then, congrats on those skills as well. It's been early blacksmith here by Tato. I'm a bit surprised by that. Why would he go for that? Maybe he wants to go for a boom. And still, it might absolutely be possible that a lot of players might die quite quickly here. Here is three on gold, quick walling, two wall two villagers of those. What happened? Where's Doubt? He doubt castles himself out of the tournament. Oh look at what is horsepower doing? Multi sheep if I've ever seen one. Going for double bit axe now. Horsecolor coming in for MBL. Trying to go for more houses. Not the most efficient way to do it, but what can he do? And yeah, his woodland is pretty far away. Let's see who else is going for army. It is Stark going for stables, so maybe he can do something. He's scouting Tato and he should know about MBL indeed. Yeah, where's Liri going for all his archers? For now, he's keeping them at home. Scouts on force power coming in, so that's yeah, more of the unfortunate scenario for us. Uh, two players are attacking each other, which actually build army. And they aren't punishing yeah, the other players, which are simply grooming like ACM, not even a single military building. Mm, neither. Yeah, it's to show. And then they are playing it wide open as well. And so is Warrior. So a lot of people could get, pun get punished here. But it seems like Nerea and Horsepower will just be super safe. Oh, one villager down though. And that's a small win. 11 more minutes to go. To the first prize money. And we have extra gold for Tatolia in the top, I think. Or no, that's his third spot. So only one extra spot. And let's take a look. Where are all the purple scouts? I'm a bit confused. So is he just going for scouting? Stark is just going for scouting. Is that an option? Oh yeah, look at that. He built three scouts. But not to attack, only to scout. Maybe kill a villager here, kill a villager there. And that looked like a, a computer player reaction there. Villagers getting attacked, let's delete the building. Let's see two more hits, one more hit. What is Stark doing? Is he committing to it? Oh, I think he could have gotten it. No, the scout is dead for sure. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. That hurts the scouting a bit. Uh, didn't even get the villager. I did get like 70 wood off of Larry there, but that's it. Because of the cancel. What else is going on? We still have military count Larry, the highest. Maybe go after the blacksmith's fletching finished. Go for some attack, and yeah, horsepower should have no answer to that. We'll lose at least one villager. Maybe even need to send more home. He's been sending more to the front. That's so weird. To get some walls done. And yeah, let's see how that continues here. And oh, MBL losing the scout as well. Now going for the market. That's it, ACM on the way to Castle Age played it very open. Even going with three on stone, so we might see him coming in with the castle and some plume dodgers. Let's take a look how Liri is trying to take that engagement. Bloodlands coming in for horsepower pretty soon. We should out micro that. 
Just one defense would be very important as well. Let's take a look. Oh, he's trying to take the fight. And that's a pretty reasonable engagement, but still needs to run behind them. And yeah, Liri will out micro that every single day of the week. At least one villager will die. Maybe even two. Two scouts went down before that as well. And oh, he is sacrificing her. And yeah, the rest of the villagers will get hope. Oh. Vikings OP and feudal start. They are pretty strong, I believe so as well, yeah. But they weren't picked yesterday. Because obviously you need to get a good army out in the long run to really increase your points. Uh, big wall here by CM, still uh, open over here. Oh, and Vilch has been sent back to work. Take a look, what else is going on? Really with 13, 6 for horsepower rest. Everyone with one. That means Stark lost a lot of his scouts as well. MBL at the moment with the highest points, but Stark Warrior and Tito will uh, hit Castle H as well. So we'll see about that. Ah, one in quite a bit. Look at that. Pops 27 out of 80. They say popped 28 out of 65. And Liria is strong. 51 uh, pop, but yeah. Quite far away from reaching Castle H. Compared to a lot of the other players. So, getting one table up as well. And still open. But, we have two TCs up as well. ACM will be in a fine position for sure. Not really sure who will get the highest points. We now have knights coming in. Start going for the defensive castle. So, th those won't do too much. And they all decide to go aggressively to the north. Very heavy on gold here. That doesn't want to take all the sheep. It's putting one extra TC now. Just a bit more on stone, and yeah, no chance of those knights doing any damage. Maybe now, even without any defensive upgrades. Completely walled here. Stark, that is. And yeah, that won't do much. Well, even getting another kill against the tower, most likely here. Yes. Let's see, MBL is continuing to attack here. Not sure if that's the right decision. Is now thinking better of it and it's going back. Now more archers being... The face of horsepower who went double stable. What is going on here? And now going for the blacksmith. Is he going full feudal attack? It's so weird. MBL now losing his first knight means 0 2. And we'll lose another knight as well. What is MBL's control here? Very untypical for him. And Stark in a good position to maybe take that. We still have two more minutes to go. MBL at this point playing with his personal advantage. Nice to see only going for some more knights. Maybe can do something against it. So, yeah. Or he did more with, more with one, this one villager kill than he did against Stark. One minute 40 left, Conquistador is now going, trying to snipe some villages of Tito, knowing that they can't really attack each other. Trying to go for some easy villager killed somewhere else. Tito sending all his villages into the TC, should be fine here. And seems like it might go into favor of MBL. Putting another TC now. And what does he see? He's got a lot on the map as well. So active with some of the knights now gets convert against him. And it's still 40 seconds left. Stark is out on the map as well. Can he maybe get some more kills? Uh, here in the wood line might be annoying quite surely. And 30 more seconds. If Stark can get like 3-4 villager kills, that might be so good for him. Tato is pulling the villagers though, not getting all the kills. And this will be 10 second decision. MBL, yeah, just finished another TC. And that looks good for him. 20 minute mark. MBL, $20. Now one convert of Tato. And let's take a look. We still have ACM, low score, but he has 3 TCs up, has Castle up as well, so he will be fine. Uh, will be tougher for Horsepower, who's still facing an attack from Liri. Let's see. Oh, I know. <gasps> wow, that was a great wall here. 
knowing that he couldn't close this gap, but second house in this direction, that was pretty well done. We'll lose at least two villagers, that's true. We had a big reaction going on over here, didn't miss that, sorry guys. But Liri still has the amount of crossbows out here, it's just enormous, and yeah, now getting university, so that will be brutal. And horsepower still in the feudal age, only now going for wheelbarrow. No chance for him to get onto a strong army, and he could get overrun by ACM again, like in the last game. But ACM didn't go for the full kill. <gasps> Look at that outpost here, to all that uh, choke area. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Okay, let's take a look at village account. We have Lily at 42, the lowest after start. We have horsepower at 51, but still fuel late. The rest, uh, everyone kind of around the 60s. 3 TCs here for MBL, 3 TCs for SCM. Tato is looking at 4 TCs, I believe, indeed. And Stark at now 3 TCs as well. Here we're going for ballistics and should be super safe after that. Where is he going with all this trusty man? Really tough, because horsepower doesn't have a lot of army, but he's well towered up. Take a look, but not all the villagers will fit into the CC, and his wood line is a bit exposed. Trying to defend against the attack of Leary here means that he doesn't control his villagers here at the top, and that puts him behind quite a bit. Oh, and he's trying to attack with villagers? He's going full down wood here. Oh, trying to get another tower up. Um, maybe should try to take wood over here and uh, gather here. Uh, 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 it is tough and Leary is quite surprised because he doesn't know what's going on but actually Houseball was uh, commenting on the ACCM rate and Leary thinks like oh god I'm doing a lot of damage uh, pat on the shoulder but that's not the main thing at the moment so many villagers going down Houseball now at 38 second lowest is 54 Leary he's here two TC's Let's see, maybe one or two will just go, go down, but no, crossman out, ballistics plus two, and oi, 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 that might be one or two villagers going down here for ICM, let's see how Leary can manage that, should split all his army, should one shot now, and that has to be a lot of kills, and ACM isn't reacting, that has to be like every single villager, still no reaction, indeed you can see the splitting here, great stuff, siege workshop now coming up, but that has to be every villager. Oh boy, ACCM dropping down so much now, and horsepower now only reaching castle eight. Could maybe get something out, but that was that was beautiful for him. Now Sam is coming in with all his uh, conquistadors as well. Trying to raid against MBL. MBL has a nice amount of monks, so he should be at least yeah. Having a chance to defend that. Some camels out as well, plus one attack, plus one defense on the way. Dark in a beautiful spot here to fight against knights, but not the best one to fight against monks. Not going into the wrong direction even. A convert against him? Nope, didn't happen. Dark 40 C boom. To show now even that the fifth one might go for. Oh, he was converting a lot of flu archers and conquistadors. <laughs> Look at that Kel's army. Consisting out of four monks, four conquistadors, and three plumed archers. <laughs> and Tatoo going for a very ballsy defense here. And yeah, that was a lot of villagers down for ACCM. Good for horsepower because that means he will not get pressured by the north. And maybe if Warrior wants to push against Liri, he still have horsepower having a chance. At the same time, what will Tito attack? Because Tito, with all his booming, might be very strong. Star can do a lot, and the Al still in the lead as well. So that will be a lot of interesting. Seven minutes coming up, and oh boy, I hate it, but I have a cold and need to blow my nose again. And we are back. Okay, more rate of Lyric coming in by the second castle for HCM and Mangan allowed as well. So he has to be super safe. And the Elsworlds now being threatened a bit. So on the way to Imperial Age. 
but so is Warrior and the L and ACCM as well. So four players on the way to MP8. Only Stark, Horsepower, and Leary missing. With only three TCs. What is his eco looking like? 75 villages. Not that great. ACM lost a lot, obviously. And he was so far ahead. Um, <clears throat> putting the third castle now. Where is it? Oh, protecting his wood line now. Does not want to have this happen a second time. What is uh, Tato preparing? Oh, look at that. Cheeky citrus shop at the side. Hope he doesn't want to show them. And that would be like one of the most brutal ram pushes. He goes full rams against ACM. He's going full to archers. It could get very ugly. Crosspower going for more knights. Trump is sure if I like that. He knows he has to be behind if he does anything in castle it. Then building up would be the better choice, but he's going for the plus two defense now. Has bloodlines and has the plus one attack. Maybe at the same time poking at the other side. And having an army over here. So that would be another yeah. Bunch of finishes going down here for horsepower. Relics would actually be very good here for start, but that's not very important because this game will last only 10 more minutes. Now, actually, extra time here by horsepower though. Leary trying to push in further. Should start a step micro. Not too essential what's going on here. Um, Leary maybe missed it with groups a bit. He's trying to move that army a bit and suddenly he's running through to see. <gasps> Deleted! What? Horsepower deleted two towers? Oh! Oh! Did you see what he did there? He didn't want to give a second attack sign to Leary. That's why he deleted those towers. What a masterpiece! Horsepower! That was genius! He deleted those two towers to not give another attack sign to Leary. What the actual... That is so funny. So, Blue Notch is now obviously performing pretty well against Knights in Castle Age, but it's still no elite and it's not the right amount of numbers here, so he needs to retreat and a lot of Rams taking some damage. And we see Horsepower and even maybe teaming up a bit now. And let's take a look at Stark. What is he going for? Mass Conquistadors. Not 100% sure how effective that will perform against Mass Camel and against the Kaled army. It still consists out of four Conquistadors and two Skirms. Uh, two Twin Archers. Not going for a castle. Going for more traps. Oh, yeah. Has to have another castle as well. Over here. And let's see how this will go. And Feels like, yeah, Plum is now having plus three even. And only 100 years left. That means big trouble for Horsepower. He needs to get something done. At the same time, we have Warrior now getting the big attack against MBL. He was only booming the whole game. MBL went for some army. Let's see how Warrior will try to do that. He has a lead boat rider. He has a lot of pikemen as well. And going with cat rams of the Celts already. And oh, plus one plus four. But still, MBL looking with a strong army here. Has hand cannoneers and wonks behind his camel lines. The camels though will fall. And then the hand cannoneers not performing too well in the first row. Going for cavaliers now as well. Uh, that will be tough. He will lose a lot of his archery range. And let's see how it will continue and where all the other armies will go. Tito is now pushing against ACCM and this is getting very scrappy here. We will still have seven more minutes of pure action. Warrior going for the big kill. MBL is absolutely struggling to hold his side. Especially if more crossbow arrays coming in. And Liri now getting braces, getting arbalest, getting chemistry. So that will be a super deadly army with 11 range if I remember correctly. Same time we have horsepower continuing to... Fight and castle it against the guy in the pure edge. I'm not sure about that. And now this is getting so weird. What will Warrior do? Will he try to defend some only just go obviously do a huge difference? And therefore MBL now survives. Tito getting Yeah, doing some defense. Is continuing to push World Riders alone, won't do the job, I believe. Let's see, he doesn't have the Onage attack, I believe. And then it will get very tough. Where are the Conquistadors of Stark? Looking to take some attack against the Toe in the long run. The Toe is continuing with all his rams, and as we said before, that's so deadly. As a man, you're so vulnerable against pure ram attacks. Some Onage just behind that as well. Look at Stark's amount of upgrades he's getting. 
He's getting every upgrade in the book. <laughs> it needs skirmishes, every monk upgrade, every uh, even going for the uh, champion line. That's so weird. And we all did hold, did not die. And because Warrior lost a lot of steam at the other side, that means Sato is now looking in a very good spot, but he is getting backstabbed as well. Only four more minutes left. This is one of the best games we had this very tournament. And everyone is trying to get the high score. Stark, Warrior, Tito, everyone is going for it. Liri now as well and MBL. And at this point, Horsepower is still trying to push against ACM. He's struggling at the front. So actually, Horsepower is doing some damage. But he needs to hope that MBL, uh, Tito keeps on pushing against ACM. Because if he isn't, it will be tough for Horsepower. Still the run for the number one spot. These conquistadors around. Is he attacking MBL? Not really. And we have Warrior falling behind quite a bit now. Start going for the all upgrades uh, strategy here. And Warrior, that's not a good fight, I believe. Um, yeah, lacking some Cavaliers, I know. And I can see why you would go for the attack there. But still, uh, it gives enough hand cannoneers. And as you said before, if the distance is once close, a lot of them going down, but that was a successful hold by MBL. And Sunny Warrior, third lowest in points, so he will not compete for the first place. It will mainly be Stark and Tito. We are looking at only 27 years left. And oh, that's a big SO shot against the Conquistadors. Good for Tito, indeed. Repairing his SO as well, and that's good. That's very good for Tito. Now getting more hits against ACM, maybe. Should go for the ramp push just shortly. Um, uh, just shortly before the, the timer ends, ACCM will probably get 6th place here, but that's absolutely enough. I think it will be the decision again between Tito and Stark again in this game. Who will get the highest points? Stark is going for the all upgrade attack, and, and, uh, and Tito trying to go in for the next ram attack. If he gets like 10 more ratings, that would be so good for him. Horsepower, what is he doing? He oh look at that! G G G G Oh oh and indeed it's G for him. But let's see who will take the win. It's still so close. Sato is going in for the ram push, but he's really attacking. That might be so tough for him. He's throwing the game, I believe. Sark is now pushing in. He's getting some kills against CSO as well. Now pushing the most palins. Only three more years. Who will win? It seems like Stark will snag another win for himself. One year left. And Stark, 20 more dollars. Horsepower eliminated. The ramp push in the end for Tito didn't really have the greatest efficiency. Maybe sending in some SO would have helped out. Maybe some road riders and just a push in at the back was too distracting for him. They really going for a big kill against Warrior, but yeah, not the big problem here. MBL, nice hold and keeping himself in the game. Horsepower out after his weird defense here against Leary. Not really sure why he went for the second stable. And I think the Castle Age push against the more boomed ACM was a mistake as well. Stark playing Spanish and taking the win. Quite surprising to me. Winter Con Warrior losing all his villages there against the multiple push. Literally sick kill stats, but yeah, didn't go for any raising. Didn't have the greatest eco as you can see. Stark, stream eco and research tab. 54 research, really pushing it there for him. Second one is a dream reaction with 30. That's a big difference. And don't you relics even. Village account was very high. Tito went for a lot. And we can see, yeah, yellow very slim all this time. And we see red finding a lot of battles. And now very slim in the end. Didn't even have a single military unit. But he got a lot of kills before. Since he boomed pretty well. And then now we are down to six players only.
That's tough. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So who got money now? We have MBL going for twenty dollars and Star going for forty dollars already. Well, what does he want me to do? Okay, so weird scenario. MBL says he has dinner in 50 minutes, which takes 10 minutes. And I'm telling him we can't wait. Like you, I told the time the time before, and they they will have to play. There's no way around. Um, can you explain what happened here? I will take a look into it. Oops, a bit. He's trying to move that army a bit, and suddenly he's running through the sea. <gasps> Deleted! What? I will explain it pretty well. But I don't go into the, uh, into it anymore. Um. <clears throat> yeah, not sure what how how I should rule it, but okay. Uh, let's take a look at what civilizations we had. Emil playing Persians. We had Tito playing Celts. We had Stark playing Spanish. Red Leary going for Brits. ACM playing Mayans. Warrior going for Celts as well, I believe. And Horseplow for Power playing something unimportant because he sadly is eliminated. So those are the six remaining players. Um, yeah. Now Leary says he needs 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minute break. Mm. So weird. So Leary is now coming in as well. Needs some break, or he will get left by his girlfriend or something. Which I'm percent sure. <laughs> so weird. Okay, I will answer questions from the chat. Mm. Your parents said I'm not gonna. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, so 15 minute break. Uh, I will put in math. And obviously will take two or three more minutes every time, you know that. Okay, so roughly 20 minute break. Okay, sorry guys for that. I will answer some questions as they had some. Nilly, you should do dock his price pool and give yourself hope. <laughs> this guy likes uneven numbers. Uh, thank you so much for your price group. Um, you should dock the price pool and give yourself 10%. Um, no, but when they play best of nine, or best of seven games like yesterday in Europe, they can do it. What? Entertainers. Anyone streaming that SC Glamour game? I thought Slam would. When is the next uh, large scale journey? What is large scale for you? Favorite Sif and Random map? Probably Persians. Yeah. Oh, stuff. What currently do you live in? Germany. When you plan to do the next escape event? Well, I'm casting Midweek Madness next Wednesday. But I haven't set my game set, so that will be a disaster, probably. And the next big escape gaming tournament? I can't give any info on that. Would researching atheism do anything? Uh, what does it affect? Not am not sure. Sorry. Like escape gaming master sort of. Um, well, we have something in April or May. I can say that. Nilly is just playing the long con. He'll wait until he has a huge tournament with the Jordanic Prize and then he'll enter it himself and win it all. Unlikely, unless I ban like the top 40 of the world. Nearly, where are your glasses? I did uh, eye surgery and did laser them. And now I don't need glasses anymore. Which is pretty, pretty damn nice. AC logo coming out strong. Nearly, please make the have once. Dude, I, uh, so, sometimes so tough for me to make sense of the next, next big escape gaming tournament will probably be Arabia. Um, not very unlikely. Please make that face again. You look great. Did Viper not sign up for that as a random draw or higher players? He didn't sign up for that. Do you dream about hippos? Um, I think never. No, I never dreamed about hippos. Has it started yet? Yes, we already lost quite a lot of players. Or oh, we lost Dowd and Horsepower. And we still have six players in it. At the bottom you can see how much money they have earned yet. And we still have, let me think about it, 480 minus 80, $200 to give out. Yeah, since we have five more games. Lily, how do you trim your neckline for your beard? Um, well, I have a razor and I just take off the topping and trim it here, but it's not very well done at the moment. Uh, does Andre Tipnefer dream of electric hippos? What? Lily, are you married? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, maybe I should continue in. Continue in. Continue. 
Not sure if there should be an E. I can Google that. Continue. Okay. Continue. No. But the Black Horse Ball was supposed to, supposed to win. Yeah, he was supposed to. When do you play poker? Uh, after this finishes, so in five games, so roughly two and a half hours. I hope I can start before um, 19 GMT. Uh, let me check. I will play on Poker Stars tonight, the tournament where it's guaranteed 10 million and the winner gets 1 million. And I will explain every hand, and it should be pretty interesting for you guys. Um, and that one will start at, I believe, 18 GMT. Uh, being one hour late is okay, I believe. Uh, let me take a look. How many chips do I get? Yeah, one hour late is fine. Yeah. Would be nice to play it from the start, but that's not really an option. Yeah, so that will be very nice. Nearly what job did your grandfather from your mother's side do? Teacher. <laughs> he was a teacher. It was funny, like both my um, parents from my mother were teachers and she wanted to become a teacher as well, but they did uh, tell her that she should get a serious job, like a real job. And Therefore, she just became a, a doctor and but carried the dream in her heart of becoming a primary school teacher and now I became it. So probably like you don't need to uh, read too many Freud books to know that I never had the choice of, of my job, but my mother decided that before I was born. Oh, I still need to prepare something later on because I want to stream um, without any delay. So I will have something hiding over my cards. And I'm not even sure what I will use. What's your day job? Well, kind of poker player. I was playing poker professionally for eight years and now I'm a primary school teacher. Uh, wait for me. Well, um, I will wait for them and then we will hopefully continue. Really sucks that uh, roughly 60 players already lost, uh, left the stream and I can't really do anything. Um, yeah, it's really bad. That doesn't surprise me who work for ice cream. That your mother is a primary school teacher. Because you uh, sound like a well. Well educated, very balanced person. Mm, the terminal virus. Mm. Reddit place. Oh yeah, I can see it. Mm. So guys. Reddit place. You can see that. Just type in Reddit place and then you can help out. It's a huge world of everyone doing pixels somewhere. And the ARC community is actually pretty well 
uh, doing the AOC logo or Atom Empires logo in it. So if you want to contribute, go on AOC zone and find some infos and try to help out and continue finishing that masterpiece. I don't really know what it's for, but I got messaged by three people to advertise it today. I have to say that yesterday games were a bit more crazy today, everything will be more calculated. Can't agree. Like the Oasis game was more crazy than every other game. Let's see. Uh, needed to really win 2 million euros, 6th place. Barcelona? No, 225,000. Not 2 million. You uh, got confused with one zero there. Uh, Travel chat would be nice indeed, yeah. Okay, what can we do? 10 minutes? Mm. We could look over me against Doubt from yesterday, the poker match, and we can analyze a bit. What happened? Is that an option for you guys? Analyze the first match, maybe. Alright, I will. Okay. Good job, yeah, Hugo. I'm Hugo. <laughs> oh. Really loading here. But let me see, can I get it a bit bigger? Okay, so that's yesterday me and Doubt playing poker against each other. And I will have to put that into HD for sure. Can analyze a bit what happened yesterday. So now we're going for ace nine, which is pretty standard. Uh, we can even make that a bit smaller. You can see my head at all times. That's funny. So now we can discuss everything like ha what happened yesterday. Maybe that's a bit interesting for you. You enjoyed in the poker stream. We want to have my thoughts a bit clearer. Um, funny how my head sometimes jumps in. So now we have ace queen of spades, which is obviously one of the best poker hands we can have. We go for the easy raise. I will open 2.6 big blinds here. And he goes for the three bet. So he's raising. And now I have the decision. Like folding is super bad. I have a very strong hand. Do I want to put it in here or do I want to call and play a hand? The thing is, I'm in position. So I will always uh, act after him or behind him. And that's very good for me. So calling is good. Then I have a very strong hand. And like, if I really want to get it in, he's not calling me with worth and he's not folding any better. So that's like a very bad scenario for putting it in. Um, so I decided to go for a call here. And we hit a reasonable flop, I would say. Uh, we hit a gut shot, a backdoor flash roll and top pair. So we still uh, get crushed by ace king, aces kings, maybe jacks, and yeah, we were really hoping for either a spade run out or a 10, or hoping that he had a bluff um, at the start. And yeah, can, <laughs> like, 
I'm making my head here and he checks, which is very bad by him because by him raising before and me only calling, that means that he actually has a stronger hands. Uh, in general, like not in not this specific type, and this means that he should always bet this because in the long run I will fold much more than he. Um, the, uh, I will fold a lot there because he can have all the strong hands like aces, kings, jacks, ace, king, and I can't have them because I would have pushed them all in before the flop, and now I'm calling, so his range is stronger and he should always bet. The flop so i still think okay i'm not getting called by a lot when i when i bet here a lot that it's worth and i'm not getting a better hand to fold so i'll go for check now we have a queen which is an interesting card now i can beat ace jack and king jack those are the only hands I now improve on. So my hand actually didn't get much better. It feels like, oh, now I have a two pair, but I'm still getting beat by all the sets. Now a straight beats me as well. And, but I don't really see him having a lot of tens here. So I wasn't very scared. So he goes for a bet, and that was a very small bet. It was 160, I believe. And 180 into 320. So, not really much I can do. He can still have a lot of bluffs. I can still beat some hands. He couldn't have the same hand. And I will just go for a call. But I wasn't really happy. Now we have a king. And that's not the greatest card. Now I split. If I was ahead against something like ace 8 or something, just random 3 by 3 flop. And now just bet the turn. I'm in a bad position. And every king beats me. And still every 10 beats me. So I feel like if he bets here, I'm probably going to fold, to fold because I have a lot of kings in my range as well. So he can't like really bluff me and I will fold everything. I can have king, queen, king, jack, uh, king, 10, I believe. And I can still have a lot of 10s as well without hearts. And so... Is it real money or cash game? That was a $100 silver go I played against Doubt yesterday. Yes. And now he goes for a check, and I have an easy check behind him. Now he shows Jack 7 of hearts. And I instantly say, what a bad play by him, because what is he really achieving? Like, he has to bet the flop. He isn't like, he has so many strong hands. He has aces, he has kings, he has ace king, he has jacks, all in his pre-flop uh, pre three betting range, ace jack as well, maybe king jack. So he can put a lot of pressure on me and I can't really call against him. He has a flush draw as well. So I think it's very good for him to bet. And the tournament makes no sense at all. Like you have to think, do I ever fold a hand that he is um, behind against. Like, what do I, could I fold? Like, king nine suited, queen nine suited, something like that, but very rare hands. And yeah, I won't really fold an ace, I won't really fold a 10, I won't fold any two pairs. And yeah, I won't call any worse sense than his. Maybe uh, like nine, eight of hearts or something like that. But that again would have been so much better if he bet it on the flop. So I wasn't happy how he played it. And that was just one analysis and my thoughts on one single hand we played yesterday. And I have those thoughts for every single hand we played yesterday. And now, um, yeah, there's... Uh, Kind of back, MBL is back at least. And um, yeah, I told them to start in one minute. I am German.
Need a better switches to the game to poker on Twitch. I will report him. Kappa. Yeah, next game should be coming up in one minute. Okay, Leary is here as well, so they are in time. And we will start within one more minute. Uh, time to get hyped again. Don't you think so, guys? Back to lay started. Not so solid. 25 minute break. <clears throat> we can yeah, get back into the game. Mm, we're meeting a fellow pesto uh, with champignons or mushrooms. Do you cook for yourself? Yes, like three or four times a week. Since I'm a vegan at home and vegetarian when I'm on the way, it's pretty tough sometimes. Get good food on the road. And now, finally, we can jump into the next game. It will be played on Nomad. Still six players around. And let's take a look at the civilizations we have to tow. I'm not really sure where he's putting his CC, but neither is he. Uh, playing Vikings, so is Mr. Leary. And then we have Stark playing Japanese this time. And we are going for the Mayans. First one to start with CC. 
ACCM playing Persians and Warrior playing the Persians as well. Oh, very unfortunate dog for him. Look at that. Very far away deep fish. Uh, could not have been worth. I think on the whole map, that's probably the worst dog together with this one. Yeah, okay. Unfortunate start for him. And uh, let's see how this plays out here. Everyone who just tuned in, we have a timer at the top. Whoever has the highest point at the 20 minute mark gets $20. Whoever has the highest point at the 41 minute mark gets $20 as well. And whoever has the lowest score at the 21, uh, 41 minute mark gets eliminated. And then we continue with five more players. Wealth is in docking yet. Ah, oh, we might add. Oops. Oh, the game is paused. You can't go into the spec overlay. That's interesting. And I can't go into the main map. Oh. Uh, let's add uh, number of fishing boats here. That might be very helpful. The Viber Man will say bye bye after this game, after this round. Well, maybe he will. Let's take a look at the spot. So, Tito, uh, yeah, nice deer, sheep, gold, berries, stone. Only missing some boars, but could get them on the left hand side. Then we have Liri with some boars as well. Oh, and Tito is getting the long distance boar lure here. And so Liri is left with only one boar. On the other side, we have Starks, that stone spot here. And yeah, he has no food at all, so that will be super ugly for him. I'm not sure if he has a dog. Uh oh, yeah, that will be a very tough start for Stark, I believe. Then we have Warrior. Oh, beautifully spawning into boars. And yeah, and we all had some problems, but now it's all good again. Uh, yeah, that looks reasonable, but I don't really see gold. Next to the sea, I wanted to say, but then I found two very, very close. And then we have ACM, close to three shots, but then he really doesn't have any gold. Look at that mini map here. What the actual, he has so far away gold spots. And yeah, that's just super unfortunate for impressions. Uh, without gold, uh, it's reasonable to have like good trash for sure. But yeah, he absolutely wants to have gold in the long run. But he needs to expand and he can't really push onto those gold spots without the possibility of going for knights, for example. So now going for the first dock. I think it's into the game. We still have Stark. Oh, he's docking in the middle now. And yeah, that's an unfortunate dock for him. Let's go into his point of view. What did he see? Oh, he saw that that had to be a small pawn. I'm surprised that he didn't go for that one. Maybe knowing that he's very far behind. Didn't want to go for exposed wood spots, but yeah, after that sheep runs out, he will struggle quite a bit. Liri now passing his way, blocking his out house for a small second. Not sure what Liri is really doing. Did he build the dock yet? Yeah, exactly where Stark could have gotten his. But now Liri is going for the great, great fish here. Now let's check the warrior. Yeah, unfortunate for him, for sure. I doubt said he didn't really have a strategy for first game. Never thought he would be out right away. I could have absolutely started in my yeah pre-tournament start analysis. I said like players like Tato and Stark will shine on those settings, and players like Doubt will absolutely fail because I feel like he isn't the guy who can properly adjust to those settings. But yeah, we'll see if Stark and Tato can continue shining because for now they have the lead when it comes to money. I'm going for the mill here, trying to get some shore fish, which actually means that he yeah, should build two more fishing ships here as well. And yeah, that's a very unfortunate start for Stark. Already heavily behind in village account. Warrior with the best start, although he had a bad dock here at the start. I had a villager even for MBL. That's quite surprising to me. What did really happen here? 
Oh yeah. And the Knight of Literature. That's still not docked by him as well. Oh, that's wrong. He has one to the top. Even losing one here. So Lyrie killed the village of MBL. Passing the TC. And it seems like Liri is even going for a second dock here. Does not have any more food income. Now it's sending in two more sheep. And yeah. Unfortunate stuff for him. And then I again should have used the 28 minute break to blow my nose. But how will do it now during the game? Just to be more set up for the next upcoming 31 minutes. Nomad should be 10 minutes longer to start a bit slower here. Well, uh, we don't really have the option. <coughs> Time limit. I think it is 500 years and the next one is 700 years. So it's significantly longer. If it would have been 600 years, I would have went for that. But it's tough. My first game with no TC start 2 without water. Uh, yeah, but Bedouins, you have a faster start due to shorefish. Here you have the faster start because you can fish some. But only if the toe isn't intercepting. So MBL not losing his fish here. That's pretty ugly for him. And yeah, he already has a farm. That's something you very rarely see that early into the game. ACL not having the greatest efficiency as well. As two dogs out though. I don't like you, MBL says. And yeah, he probably means to tow. Who took advantage of his Viking start? Joke, I do. Oh, MBL, such a nice guy. And now Galleys of Liri coming around as well, trying to intercept some of Stark. Or maybe just patrol over here to protect his own fish. And this missing Stark, is that an option for him? Said look, Liri. Yeah, indeed. He's just patrolling here. To keep his own fish safe, but at the same time we have Stark fishing in between. And yeah, he doesn't know it. And Stark now trying to get another dog up as well. Players really trying to go for a boom. Two dogs now for Warrior. Building, yeah, they're not so much better. But I'm not sure who will be the first one to castle it. I would say Stark, who didn't have any yeah fighting just yet. Or Warrior. But since Stark had a bad start, probably has to be Warrior. Liri at this point, very nice score. Going for a defensive tower against the Toe. The Toe is going for the defensive tower as well. And that's an area which is pretty much tough to wall. You can't build a Palisade wall here since we're playing a war mod. So if Tito wants to wall this, he has to build a dock in this very spot. More gold for Liri over here. He was pretty far out of gold as well. And still ACM, the poor guy. He might need to go for stone and sell some. In the long run, yeah, his fish isn't the greatest either. Especially because he gets raided by Warrior now. Six minutes to go. So we award the next $20. And Liri still, he's completely grushing. Uh, yeah, and missing Stark here. Could deny his food income so much more and now he thinks like nice I got Stark over here it's looking good for me but yeah he is completely missing that but yeah sooner or later the Skellies will run into Stark here for sure and Liri will be surprised that he missed that all along and now trying to micro bit here and maybe not seeing the Galleys because that's a place where you don't normally look at the minimap now trying to expand his vision a bit with some outpost and it's better tower at the gold Going to be annoying continuing. And at the same time, we have Stark trying to sneak a third dog, even. And yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Red is here, and yellow is sending some more. Same time, ACM on the way to Castle Age, the first one. But you need to build a market. It's now sending some villagers across the map. Warrior is trying to go for some fishing ship at other places as well. Tito is going for a reasonable boom, and another ball for Tito coming in. Two defensive towers here for him, so he looks quite reasonable. 
but still it's so tough to wall. So whenever a player decides to go for some real aggression, it is tough if you grush before or did go for some other stuff and HCM, let's see if he wants to go for the boom. I think he's looking good in the game. He's not getting attacked. He is looking like he at least has some fish left which isn't getting attacked. Maybe not in the long run, but I think he will have the best boom. So now going for fletching, having his fish super protected. And now three minutes to decide who will get the next money here. It looks like it won't be MBL. Maybe ACCM with this boom could do something. The CCs could get up and that's a nice boost. Now there's a lot of map control. Maybe some fire galleys could even do something. Or fire ship. So we have some more taxi of Leary. He could go for the win. He has a lot of map control. Scouting a lot. Look at that where his galleys already are. He gets a lot more kills against Stark here. And we'll continue. He still has nice fish as well. And exploration. So, oh, but now losing one galley guaranteed against the fire ship of ACM. And look at that. Killing galley and still having 91 HP. That's so brutal. And getting some more kills as well here though. ACM now going for bones, Bosa and Town Watch. One HTC for him. Want to see a second one, but where? That's really tough for him. ACM is venting to wheelbarrow. What? Overlay, get home, you're drunk. And so is that village of warrior here. Going um, in a weird way. And yeah, even let me ask him, Red, where are you going? And yeah, not 100 sure. <laughs> What Red's plan, what, um, probably wanted to go for another dog, but couldn't really find any possibilities here. So now Leary, looking in a good spot to maybe snack the first money for himself. Trying to get for more galley skills. And going for more scouting, look at that, he sees a lot. And getting another galley kill here, trying to expand a bit more, getting outposts everywhere. And it feels like it might be his. Getting so much on the water, Sito maybe contesting him. Feels like no! And Liri, 20 minutes. First $20 for him in the bank. ACM will lose all his fish. Should he maybe go for a 30 C? I'm still surprised that he isn't all over here, so that makes a bit more sense. Warrior, a lot of outposts in that. Yeah, the dots all over the map are so confusing here. ACM going for a lot of fire ship, that's pretty good. Might even save some of his galleys, but Leary is just focusing them down, and that has to be so ugly for ACM. Producing so much and could take any fight here, but still losing all of his sitting ship except two. So now taking the score lead, but did not click up to castle age yet. Trying to get some more walls done, which looks pretty reasonable. They will continue to go for some more water control, as you want to see from the Vikings. And yeah, what is MBL really doing? I'm not 100% sure. He lost some water early on. And then he, yeah, had two farms. This killed two villagers close to his CC, so that's good for him. He has actually a kill set of 5 to 11. Uh, that's surprising. Oh, and Stark. Now redocking here in the middle pond. Uh oh, Leary losing some villagers into the TC of Stark. 100% sure if that was intentional. Most likely not. Oh, what was that? The villager actually going towards the TC. Yeah, and losing his life. And now some Wargan is at a yeah, very ugly spot here for Leary. And yeah, what are his plans? Two extra TCs. And going for fletching, most of wheelbarrow. Is he on stone? Let's take a look. MBL. Zero stone left, so fletching is only for attack on his TCs. Or is he doing anything else? He is at uh, one military. I'm going for stone mining upgrade as well, so most likely we will see him trying to go for a lot of plumed archers. Which are gonna wall ACM at 57, 1 TC, 3 TC. And still no, no fishing to left at all now going in as well. Hmm. 
Okay, no more gold. Is that what can I also and Boso? A Wagali and Boso. Trying to go for more TCs as well. Uh, just a lot of things you want to see. Oh, and Monastery and University. That's the Tozi could look really like he can go to Imperial Age. Not really. I'm a bit surprised by that optimism. How many fishing ships does he have? He has 11, which is quite nice, but still. He doesn't have a single farmer here. He's going up to 3 TCs. Maybe a monastery just to defend against knights and do the rest to get the listing? Maybe, maybe. Oh, is he skipping villagers? No, he is not. Liri on the way to Castle Lake as well. Going for the Castle as ACM after getting so much stone. Not 100% sure if that uh, castle that he will actually build elephants out. He is ahead by 23 villagers over the second one, which is MBL, who's now starting a 3 TC boom. But he's securing a lot of gold. That's for sure. Maybe wants to build one over here as well. And then you're totally fine. If you have two gold spots in a 41 minute game, that would be enough. Tito, still high score. We now did fall behind and I think it's still everyone's game. Probably, yeah, honestly, I think everyone can still take it. Either first place or last place. Probably Tito's last place will be unlikely since Lyria is not really able to push on land and Stark isn't focusing on a land attack either. So it feels like Tito will just stabilize and take water control. I will have the high points uh, via that. But I feel like HCM is in the best spot here to go for the first place at the moment. Maybe contested by MBL, but MBL's boom was so far behind. So that's not really in store. And at the moment, he's the lowest. Warrior, three TCs. Interesting farm, Eco. And has some galleys out, but not a single fishing ship anymore. That being said, it is one. Stuck at 13 fishing ship. Not really sure where he's using them. Some in this pond. Did he lead all here, so he didn't even go for some fish traps. Which is untypical. Literally losing the water. Again, Stark's fire ships. Now going for war galleys. What is he really doing? And Stark is pushing against Liri on land. Interesting stuff. Uh, something I didn't expect. Remember guys, we have a weird scenario here that even if you could get defeated, for example, you could still advance because someone else could get defeated and have lower points. <laughs> so, yeah. Designing early on doesn't really make a lot of sense. Just try to push your score as high as possible. ACM now reaching a pre age when other players are trying to yeah, fight with very limited resources here for some war galleys. Now we have Stark pushing against MBL and, to, uh, and Jerry at the same time with a lot of different yeah, siege. Mangonel over here, Lamb over here and the Mangonel here. So yeah, funny stuff. But not getting too many kills. MBL just sending his villagers away. Just expanding to another gold spot. All reasonable. Going for second castle even. And could go for mass boom dodges. Let's see what ACM is going for. Sending more villagers. Has a castle here at home. Interesting stuff. And now sending more villagers to the front to maybe secure that gold spot for himself as well. He's building a defensive castle. And Stark needed to go for the Mulu. And needed to pause for a small second, but it continued just shortly after. Two more gold spots in the back for Tito. So he's looking in prime position to go in the long run, but. Ah! In the end, only going water won't win you the game, I believe, because you need to get some killing done on land as well. Yeah, you just hear two relics. Tato snagging relics around. What is going on? Not 100% sure if that's the best option, and actually went for two sneak relics. 
uh, giving you some society boost. Now looking in Trim Pillage, you can see TC's idols, at least two of them. And we'll click up any minute. And we will see ACM going for half fledging. Uh, okay, I thought he would go for hand cannoneers. But doesn't really have un he has a university. Uh, I want to see traps first. Let's take a look at ACM. Yeah, hand cannoneers. I want to see bomber cannons from him as well, but traps first, obviously. To buy himself some more space against MBL. And get that gold cap. Now going for the defense upgrade. Ten toes on the way to Imperial Age. Stark still pushing. Interesting castle here. And the villager. Oh, oh, yeah. Stark is getting that castle up for sure. Getting the mangle there. One for non trade. Same time, Liri is still struggling. And it feels at the moment that Liri might be the one eliminated. He can't really run to the top, he can't run to the west. East side is looking questionable as well. He's getting raided there, but did expand, yeah, somewhat. Maybe defensive mangonel could really help out. Trying to go for more towers, but cannot really go for war. It has a lot of houses here, but that won't do much. Going for some more war galleys. And warrior. Is uh, might struggle as well. It really depends on where ACM wants to go. If ACM wants to kill MBL, then MBL is in trouble. If ACM wants to go for Warrior, then Warrior is in trouble. So it feels like ACM can now decide who he wants to kill. Because you choose MBL, what do you have all have against me? Because you choose MBL, what, what, what? I'm not really sure what they're talking about. Um, Oh, this is what Stark is talking about, and MBL is now in troubles. He lost the starting TC, and needs to expand, lost that castle here. And now it will get very interesting. Oh, MBL, what a castle over here, running a lot of villages over. And now it will be the run, who will get last? <laughs> Revenge for the first game indeed. MBL after the Bedouin game wasn't very happy and trying to get another TC up here and he knows he needs to save villagers because it will be decided between him and Liri who's getting last and that castle is pretty damn good because that is saving himself some area and is slowing down his toughest competitor so uh oh all those villagers won't do too much either what can Liri really do? He will lose all those and need to spread out and he just has to hope that MBL dies first, but that will be tough. So most likely Liri will get eliminated and now we need to see who's getting first place. Maybe we can see all the Knights of Warrior. How did he get the sneak village all over the map? That's the one we saw first and now going for the sneaky ram attack here against the toe. He already has Arbalest out, so that won't do much. So maybe Tito can even get some killing on the land. And not sure if ACM's unit choice was so good. Hand cannoneers, yeah, they perform well against a lot of units and are reasonably cost efficient. But we just went for cavaliers with plus four defense. He could have raided so many villages all over the map and that would have been just great for him. Okay, castle of MBL down and still 700 points. Let's see, maybe Wargalis can do something. If they focus on MBL, MBL has a lot though. And what's Liri doing? He's just trying to get some more wood. And yeah, MBL will lose that to see as well. 50 more years! Tito, what is he doing? A lot of Arbalest, Warriors coming in. Does not have bloodlines even. See how can Tito defend that? No palisade option over here, but I think it's even walled. So that's yeah, probably the perfect scenario for Tito. He can fight against an army that he can easily beat. To uh, tight choke area. Um, but maybe or I can get some killing done. Not sure. Beautiful focusing by Tito as well, focusing the knights instead of. The Rams, but now we're extending a bit, but Warrior starting to control a bit earlier. Rams there, Warrior feeding me some score. This is what MBL is saying, and yeah, indeed he is. Look at that. So bad by Warrior, probably because he was migrating at the front all this time. Now village just being pulled, but so many Abelis on the hill here. So great for Tetoe, and he's looking in a good position to maybe save the win for himself. 
for the next 30 years. Stark again going for his mass um, upgrade strategy. And now ACM trying to kill against MBL and we will have Liri being defeated for sure. And still the decision is, uh, will it be Tito taking first or ACM? Maybe Stark has a saying in it. We are down to 25 years. Stark not fighting anywhere though. And ACM can still kill Warrior quite a bit. 20 more years. ACM is closing the distance. Tito stuck at 9k. ACM 8.4k. And he's catching up so much faster. He's killing some of the uh, units over here. Getting some more house raisings as well. And at the moment, Tito now can get some more villager kills. The uh, score difference is now roughly 400, and we have 15 more years. ACM killing that castle, maybe killing some more villagers would be an option. Warrior is kind of slinging all the villager kills here for ACM, but it looks like the toes looking stronger. So 500 points ahead, ACM now killing that castle, killing more at the same time. Tito is retreating, I think he should go in. He's going for elite berserks, and all those villagers, maybe ACM can go for it. Tito now breaking the 10k point mark, 7 years left only, and 500 more points for ACM if he would have been here five years earlier that would have been his win maybe but Stark going for all attack Liri is out of the game we can see that's left of him only and it seems like with 200 points difference or maybe 300 points difference Tito will take another $20 for him then it was only 300 points I think the unit choice of ACM was wrong. Tito, I felt like he couldn't do much. And as you can see, he didn't advance much. He didn't kill any buildings. He only killed some army and all the water won't do much. And ACM could have uh, eliminated MBL. He could have raised Warrior. He could have maybe even attacked Stark a bit. But just a small push, gaining some area. Ah! Not finishing it for him in the end. Nice kill stats, but does it really matter? I think more um, Cavaliers would have been better here. But that's what I said quite a bit. And yeah, he was very low on gold. That might be the problem. Um, went for one big attack here. And as we can see, Leary, uh, after reaching Castle he got attacked by Purple, who had problems fighting on water against Tito. was very spread out as well. And then it only was downhill for him. He couldn't really save any villagers for a nice reboot. And we're down to five players only. Let's take a look. What they can do. MBL just quickly is restarting his CC. And we have Liri out. Uh, but he gets 20 points. Uh, $20 at least. So that's a good one for him. And we have the other $20 going for Tito. So now we have Tito, no more Vikings, MBL, no more Mayans. We have Stark, no more Japanese. ACM is out of Persians as well. And Warrior, I think he had Persians. If I was wrong, someone will tell me in the chat. Yeah, Liri, eliminated and winning one in the same game. Interesting stuff. Yeah, at least didn't go empty uh, home empty handed indeed. And now we are looking into five player map. That's hideout for you guys. So what can you go for in hideout? I think Britons would be a good option. Maybe Aztecs. Some players could make an argument for Persians again, still very strong. Turks aren't bad, I believe. So that's interesting. Yeah, Warriors, Persians. So that's all done by me. What is Hideout looking like? Well, it's basically um, a mixture of arena and oasis so we have like a lot of wood in the middle of the map and players are put around that like this and they just have a small uh, easy to wall area i know it's an underrated map i'm not 100 sure it's the best map for this low settings because uh, it's one of the better ones to wall 
But it's still like the, the thing like where do they attack? It's so tough. <coughs> um, yeah, yesterday they played with the version without walls, and I think it's a bit better than one day of players had walls. Um, ver yeah, well, right here to tell again version without walls, please. Yeah, so some more music on your ears, and then we will. Oh, that was good. Then we will be back with the remaining five players. Well, that's Rise of Nations. One to go for. Oh, there's one sound check actually. We'll see. We are having some mouse problems. Did already reboot, but it seems like the mouse is still acting up. He said he will try it anyways. Let's see how that will go.
Okay, it's back today, I didn't start yet, so um, just for some time, tell me what questions you have. 310. Change that now. Go down to 5 players, right? Back today started! We have four more games, that means 160 more minutes of game time ahead of us. Very chilly music. Uh, can you teach me deathmatch? I think I can. I'm really interested in investing a lot of time into deathmatch at the moment though. Any ideas on improving the format so far? Yes. Uh, next one, if I do this again, I will do turbo random map. Because then action starts earlier. That's so much better. Okay, then let's jump into, I believe, game number four. With only five players left here on Hideout. Take a look at the civilizations. And we have five different civilizations. We have Tito playing with persons. We have MBL playing with Celts. We have Stark playing the Britons. Oh, very small wood area. To face ACM with Spanish. And last but not least, Warrior. I believe, if I remember correctly, Warrior still without any money. Let me just quickly take a look at the overlay again. And yeah, everyone. Oh, Warrior and ACM still both. Still both without the highest uh, with any out any money that's so unfortunate for them <clears throat> um 350 dollars so much money yes Shut up. and <laughs> please do some more animation stuff maybe even with scenario elements instead of just timer uh well check out uh, my youtube uh, it will be official or down below the stream you find a lot of FFA tournaments I did uh, with King of the Hill. Tournaments were called King of the Hill, and they were super interesting. And if you like, if you like this format, I think you will like those tournaments as well. Normal, normal game already happened, Smarty. Yes, it was very clutch in the end, and Tito took it. Liri got the twenty-minute mark, but in the end got eliminated. Went for the grass and then died on land. Unfortunately for him. My prediction in this game is Tito takes the 20 minute mark. Most villagers, most scouting. That's what I think will happen. And let's just see how it plays out. For well, those who didn't know the map, I kind of described it. You have a lot of wood in the middle, and all the players are somewhat around that area, trying to chop their way through it. It's especially interesting played on uh, the expansions because their onagers can cut through the wood and then you have some very sneaky attacks i'm just yeah waiting for the day when we have the expansions being allowed on blue one day and then i think i will do most of my events on the expansions on blue because at the moment i like the spectator overlay and having the possibility to watch live uh, a bit more than the new expansions. But oh, even Boar Steel attempt here by Warrior. And Tito can't be happy about that. And Warrior with Mongols. We absolutely love to have a sweet third boar. Multi shooting at the same time. Let's take a look. Oh, and getting another hit. Can only take one more. And this micro doesn't seem like super great. Even a bit far away. Oh, now going back. And I think. He can only be three tiles away when it comes to vision. Now he could run because he's close to the deers. And yeah, let's just see. It seems like a successful one. Maybe even take another sheep. That's unfortunate for him. Where is his own second ball? It's over here, let's see. The micro though. What? Oh, what is he? 
<coughs> oh yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's not talk about that too much. He got the ball hole. Let, let's agree on that. Okay, let's see what the other players are doing. They're trying to house walk quite a bit. And yeah, I like that decision a lot. But yeah, for example, ACM needs to do something towards the north. Or he will get into trouble. There's three stone spots actually, which is pretty nice with Spanish. A lot of bomber towers. Going for blacksmith now. Not on gold yet. So we'll close the to the left hand side. Hello. We'll go for a very strong room, I believe. It's only one scout in pushing. Or we already with the wheelbarrow. Interesting stuff here at 90 villager. Ah, <laughs> Nimino. Yeah, yeah, uh, out of me there. Um, yeah, he was re Nimino was referring to a video that Mrs. Marauder just did and just blew our minds. Oh no, it was T West. It wasn't Mrs. Marauder, it was T West. My bad. And yeah, but it still blew our minds. So, oh, Tatona is going for stable. I think he will go for mass scouting. That will be a strategy. Maybe want to see horse color now, indeed, and then lots of farming and just explore 100% of the map, or like 80%, as much as you can. Just to get the first $20 up for it. How long has the stream been live? Well, we already had four games and I started one hour earlier, so it is 3 hours 17 minutes. Some villagers running around here from ACM. Does he want to get a market up or does he want to go for stone? Not 100% sure. Let's we'll find that out for now. Market. And Stark is going for archers. And with that amount of villagers on gold, uh, we'll see a second archer range indeed. And he will go for some archers. And then we are absolutely not prepared to defend that. Neither would be basically anyone. Boy, with the highest points here. This great eagle from the Mongols. And now going for the deer as well. And yeah, 10 more minutes to go to the first prize money. And 31 more minutes to go until the end of the game. And when we'll have another elimination. Not sure if I like ACM's walls. He could just so easily get attacked and so easily scouted. But yeah, he's fine against scouts. So that's good for now. That means the wall behind here. And now it's going for stone as well. So now it's completely walled except that little area. Same time Stark going for archers, going for blacksmith. And we will see a lot of archers from our bridge players, obviously. Yep. And the first guy, yeah, kill. And picking up the, to the castle later at the same time without a single farm. And we are now going for the mass wall, and yeah, he's safe here as well. We'll get pushed away from his berries, but that won't be the end of the of the game here. So we're going for a big wall. It feels a bit like he's playing the Kalini strategy from yesterday. Kalini went for full boom and then into paladins as well, and smacked the win because he played against Mayans twice, and just got very favorable engagement against him. Oh, yeah, behind five worlds, that's a lot. And uh, losing some against the scouts of the toe might be one of the reasons. Oh, these are losing two actually. Um, Iron Man buying food, probably click up any second here. And yeah, as you said, taking away from the berries, but that will be it. And we have everyone up to Castle to accept to tow an MBL yet. Why is MBL not up? That's so weird. Oh, it should click up any second. Seen building a defensive tower and does not have any stone left in the space. Uh, spots are outside. That will be ugly for him. Needs to buy stone to get his boom running. Or oh, he's still in a very bad spot here, but. Okay, let's take a look. Six more minutes to show what is he scouting and let's take a look at MBL's exploration. Okay, reasonable I would say. Trying to defend all the tower. And at the same time to tow. 
We'll go for a lot more. We'll take a look at the score board even uh, just quickly before the 20 minute mark to show you the real difference and how Chateau's score is so high. But maybe with some crossbows and maybe he's sending a villager aggressively. No, not really. Stark could have done something as well. Warrior now building the defensive to see he seems to be fine after all. Trying to get some more house walls up. The toe is completely walled and you can see so many dots moving all over the map. Just to get that exploration high. Warrior second in points actually, although he's buying 20 villagers or 20 pop compared to Tito. And what did I say before the start? Tito will go for the 20 minute win. And now the question is, is he clicking up or is he not clicking up? Uh, it's, it's a tough decision to make. I think he should click up because it's just slowing him down way too much if he's clicking up. And you're obviously getting some points by reaching calculates as well, so that's not too bad. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure. Oh no, no, it would be walled, so. Yeah, Stark won't get in here. It's just keeping up the pressure, but that will be it. So now clicked up. Take a look, MBL. Maybe he can get some big Magna shots. That would be an option uh, to get the second, or no, like the score lead here. Let's take a look what does uh, Stark see. Not much. These, oops. And yeah, now going out with this Mangonel. Tato should not kill that Mangonel if he sees it. Knights now coming in. And the scout of Stark and T will just fall back without Bot Canaro not really taking that fight with the same range. Tato is continuing to go for the heavy scouting. And two more minutes left. MBL might be taking it here. Trying to go for that one big shot. Stark wants to deny that everyone's still pretty close. One and a half more minutes. Same at the same time, defensive castle, three TCs. The toe still not up. Warrior going for three TCs. And ACC, um, Stark going for the three TCs as well. And Miel were the Tetsu. That's the engagement, or well, that's the fight for the first place. Well, actually, ACM is out there as well. Tetsu now Castle late, and we only have 60 more seconds. Let's see, Micro here. And Miel not getting the hit. And maybe, oh, oh, one kill only. And that was pretty good for him. Tetsu now, let's go into his point of view. And yeah, he started so much, and it feels like he will get a 20 minute mark win. Just by building some scouts, but now, <gasps> oh oh, he had a hole. And Tito takes the win. Let's just quickly go into the achievement and I can show you exploration. Oh, actually, Warrior was out there as well. So that wasn't really the thing, but if Stark had like 30% more exploration, uh, he would have gotten the first place. Let's see what the comms can do. That will be ugly for Tito. We'll lose, I believe, one villager though. Ah, uh, yeah, that's okay. Now going for the defensive uh, monastery. We'll have 40 Caesar, but I think it will be fine. But yeah, that had to be annoying for sure. And yeah, where do you really build uh, there? Oh, maybe two villagers down? Yeah, I did. Maybe in the third one. Let's take a look. No splitting here of the Conquistadors. And that wood area will be very interesting here between Stark and ACCM. So everyone pretty close, everyone kind of booming. Conquistadors continuing to be annoying. That house won't go up. And now that will be very ugly for ACM. And yeah, one convert, very good for the two. And not really sure if ACM can do more here with his conquistadors. Yeah, he's coming in and oh, another siege workshop at a weird place. Uh, 
have their monks and camels. Oh, so good at the defense. I think they say I won't do much here anymore. Sorry guys, really annoying, but yeah. Okay, now the wall is closed here, I'm going for the stone upgrade even, so we will see him go for full conquest at all. Now even going for a siege workshop aggressively here, so might, oh, double kill of the villager. And cannot get in anymore, so that would be fine anyways. What he sees up now as well, let's take a look at village account, pretty close. All within eight villagers, MBL actually the last, and first was warrior, the guy who started the slowest, but Got up to 5 TCs and boomed only, again, compared to anyone else who did some kind of army. And let's see, if he gets on to lead Mangodice, he's in a pretty good spot to maybe take him in first place, because as we all know, Mangodice are just so good for going for yeah, a lot of kills. Start now going for Imperial Age already, trying to get Longbows out maybe even. A miserable amount of inches in stone. Only one spot, the other one's not taken yet. And the other on the other side is Kelton going for archery ranges. Is he going for skirms? I'm not sure about that. Warrior looking to pick up in pure age pretty soon now as well. Stark and MBL both up. That means ACM is still missing. He's building an aggressive castle against Tito. And that still is probably the most open game we had ever. Five players still. Yeah, the chances to take every position just depends on how they will play out the next roughly 16 minutes. Stark so will go for Arbalest and Longbows. We'll have ACM going for Conquistador push only. I think Tito will play it more camel defense. Somewhat survive. Warrior will go for Mangodice, no question. And MBL. Ho <laughs> ho. Mm. Let's see about that. He's going for skirmishers, just trademark units and rams. So skirm ram go against the Britons most likely. But that will take some time till he gets there. And Stark, what is he going for? He's sending a lot of villagers to the front to build an outpost. Outpost rush. Like we saw how horsepower do before doing the GG with outposts. Now oh, Ramgo coming in from ACM here, a guy who still did click up to Imperial Age Warrior, now clicked up. But still doesn't have a castle up. And now I need another TC. Not 100% sure if I like that. Tato trying to go for more house walls. Stone walls would be very nice for him, but no more much hurting him here. Conquistador okay, still without any upgrades, but yeah, they would benefit from personally more than from actually any defense upgrades or bloodlines. And Stark again taking the Lulu break. Uh, quite surprised by that. So now going for the Siege Workshop over here. And another stable. Take a look. Tito, yeah, far away from getting housed. Actually has the highest amount of villagers. And just going for the defense upgrade now. Siege Workshop in the back as well. Take a look, Conquistador is trying to go for more kills. Where is the defensive castle number one here of Warrior? And now we have Stark. Scouting with all his outposts. Going for more stone. Does he have a castle? Not yet. Trying to scout towards the north as well. Doesn't want to get surprised there. And now he's starting to attack MBL. He's getting Arbalest out and that amount of skirmishes won't do anything against that amount of Arbalest for sure. Especially only a few late skirmishes. I would predict MBL dying here against Stark. Uh, those Conquistadors won't get too happy either. ACM continuing his push. Yeah, he did click up to Imperial Age, so I believe that Tito will have troubles as well. Now going for the defense upgrade for his uh, Pike Man. He will play Pike Man defense ACM with the next castle. I think Tito will die. 
think Tito will die and ah, MBL will be interesting as well. He's having a lot of onages out, I believe. Let's take a look. Ah, only three banganotes. Price rams. And he's pulling university at the side and trying to get more houses up there as well. Getting raided quite a bit. And Warrior, he can decide where he wants to fight and everyone is kind of fighting at least the other four. So at the moment it feels like Warrior will take first place. At least, yeah, strategy wise. And he will get eliminated. That will be, I believe, huh, either Tato or MBL. But I could be totally wrong because at the moment I hope he deleted that. Yeah. Uh, it will be tough for him. That castle will die for sure. Uh, so many traps of ACM will come out. Another castle by ACM as well. And Tato can simply not engage that. He cannot uh, go to the bottom side because then he will run into the Mongols. And MBL is playing it quite defensively and I like that. How much does the score increase when you build a one? I believe 1000 points. But it also costs like 400 points. So it's a very heavy investment. And know that yeah, all your villagers aren't working at that time. So I think it isn't the greatest push ever. Stark missing some sheets to really pressure MBL here. He is playing good defense. Let's take a look if he's maybe getting some big onager shots out against all those Abelists of Stark. Let's switch into the point of view of Stark and always try to be aware of that and see what's going on. You see, I'm now in Pure Age getting cap ramps, getting conscription. To turn on the way to Pure Age as well, and he will play, I believe, uh, Harbor Deer defense. Feels a bit like it, and already expanding outside as well. And we are still keeping the Onages back home. Start going for some light cap as well. I want to see some traps out as, uh, on him as well. So, Stark and ACM not fighting against each other. Kisado is out. And where is the Imperial Age upgrade for them? Not yet. So good. No 100 years left only. So we'll do a ramp push with Harbodies, I believe ACM with the next castle. And ACM more and more ramps. That castle of the toe will go down. <gasps> and here the big onager shot. I will hand it numbered up and sorry for missing it, but you see she on the death here. And I knew that it had to come any moment and so was Stark, but I I I and that is so bad for Stark. Suddenly the lowest in points and MBL suddenly pushing back and Stark now on the verge of getting eliminated because he, his army won't perform too well against the fully upgraded Kels guy. Now going for Harvard, he's going for the upgrades on all his infantry and then Onages should perform so so well. Tito trying to run, trying to buy himself more time at getting the push. This might be the end of Tito. I believe Tito will be eliminated after this game. Oh, 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 that might be the end of Tato. And Warrior could decide if he wants to eliminate MBL or Tato. And I think MBL is the weaker player on those formats. Tato the master brain, but this will be his end. It will mean that he has no chance and he needs to pack his back. ACM pushing and he was struggling against that, but a mango die right here from Warrior. Now Drill coming in, we have Siege Rams, Ferrari Rams coming in. Mango die is only missing some upgrades. Some elephants being built by Tito, but they won't do much. And now even the armies of ACM and Warrior kissing each other. Same time, now the orange is pretty exposed on that side, Star could do some. What can Tito really do? He cannot. He's trying to send more villagers to the outside, trying to reboom. Maybe hoping that Moria and ACM will, yeah, fight each other. But yeah, Stark is now getting the good kills against MBL. That's not good for Tito, because that keeps Stark in the game as well. Now the Arbalest. Maybe MBL can throw it before Tito dies. Could be an option, but I feel like MBL would just trade reasonably well enough. It's not heavily on gold though. The top pop 95, MBL 145. Actually, no one over 170. We now have Elite Mango Dice over extending a bit. Not having Bloodlines, not having all the defensive upgrades. That's very weird. 
But he's still playing, uh, staying in the game and he's doing everything right, I believe. He is keeping his pop up. And we're now down to 50 years. Let's see how MBL will continue to play this out. He's the only guy who can, could get second, I believe. Maybe Stark, like, second uh, uh, together with Sito to get eliminated. If he loses everything. But we have Stark just with too few siege units. If he had, like, five rams, it could push all of that back. It would be so much better for him. At the same time, the raid of Stark just missing all the gold miners here as well. Now the Onager push coming in again. Stark using some of the Arbalest, but not as bad as before. Trying to snipe down every Onager. Elite Longbow out as well now. And now more cavalry trying to come up and clear up all the skirmishes. Very poorly upgraded. You can see Tito run for his life, but 2k point difference, something that he will not catch up. And at the same time, we have Warrior fighting for first place here against ACM. ACM fighting on his castles, but Rams. So good against all the Conquistadors. I believe the Conquistadors should put, uh, fight against the Mangalites first, and then he should pull some villagers with Super Mercy, maybe. And. It looks like a reasonable defense, but some castles will go down. Only 24 years left, and if Warrior is not taking first place here, that would be a huge throw by him. He should have a lot of Mangalites out, should go for more rams, and should take every engagement, and should take it convincingly as well. Tito has to be last. We're only looking at 18 more years. It's a GG for Tito, just getting doubled so badly for him. Really hurt, and ACM looking like he cleared this up. Warrior needs to push in, his Mangalites need to be on front, he needs to get the killing done, or SCCM will get it. I see I'm trying to take the fight, I'm not 100% sure if that's the best one, should maybe even delete that castle and not give Warrior the race here. And Warrior is kind of taking a reasonable engagement, but now out of siege as well. And Mangler is fighting uphill seven more years, Warrior is taking over the lead, more Mangalites coming in. Sending skirms to the front is something that ACM absolutely should not do. This is so close. Warrior now retreating. They shouldn't do any more upgrades now. Who is winning? Is it ACM or is it Warrior? It is indeed. Now down to one year. Warrior ACM. Warrior ACM. ACM. It seems like ACM. Indeed. What? Warrior throwing $20 here. The only guy who boomed. He could have gotten in with the lead Mangalites. He could have erased everything that Tato had. He could have, oh, he even lost against Tato here and took bad fights against ACM. What a throw and what a switch of points in the end. At the same time, MBL, yeah, he would have died against Stark, but Stark didn't have enough siege units to really kill MBL in time. Nightcap was a bit out of position as well and the big Onager shots early on really helped him out. And therefore, we have Tato eliminated, but he gets $20 on his conto and so does ACCM. Really close. What a throw by Warrior. Uh, yeah, you can see Tito was totally fine, and then we see the attack of Warrior coming in, and Tito just shrinked down. And then he had no chance. And we then quite solidly. We have the big uh, Onager shot here against Stark. And now down to four players only. And the kind of favorite for me to take most of the money, uh, Tito, now out of the tournament. Probably the best game we had so far. And so we will have to tow. And it with $60 won't be too sad. And now we have ACCM finally on the scoreboard. And Warrior. What? Yeah, ACCM now $20. And Warrior still with zero. Not so much. How did he mess that up? Um, really big fail. Okay, so now we have Tito out. And he will spread his access for MBL who went for, oops. MBL who went for Celts. Stark went for Brits. KCM went for Spanish and won the game. And we have Warrior now without the option of going for Mongols again. 
at the moment, MBL twenty dollars, Tito finished with sixty, Stark forty, Liberty finished with twenty, ACM at twenty, and Warrior still without any money. So MBL, Stark, ACM, and Warrior still left, and AC. Uh, I'm a huge Stark fan, so uh, I want to see him go go far in this tournament as well. Remember, the last one is one we won in Arabia, so it might get um, pretty tough for Stark to win that against great players like MBL, for example, or ACM. That will be tough for them. Okay, so some more music, and then we'll be back with the four remaining players. Now, on board a dispute, should be pretty, pretty interesting. And... Yeah, for all the guys who don't know border dispute, basically all four TC starting on one screen and you have all the boards in the middle, so fighting will begin instantly and this should be one of the most interesting ones as well. Maybe not as clutch in the end, but entertaining all the way. Rogan? Let's get the prize pool to her good number A. Less than three. Thanks so much, Marty. <clears throat> I will I will try to uh yeah, thanks for about 350. Um I'll put it off now with the nation goal. Um thanks everyone for donating and yeah. Keep me motivated to do more of those events. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I guarantee the price pool of $350 and I will reach that goal. So, thanks a lot. And I will see how I can edit the alert box that we can see at a bit. Uh, oh god. That was weird. Um. That will be my subscription sound. <clears throat> Marty, good boy. Good boy. Marty, thank, thank you. Are good boy. I know that, that's what he wants to hear. A test donation for dollar. And then the hippo logo is so small.
Rogan? This is a test donation for dollar. That makes a good sense. Yeah, we'll keep it that size. And maybe later on I will come up with something more reasonable. What's the plan for the next Super Tournament? Mm, well, first I will do a 40 hour stream. So that's what I do first. <laughs> well, it's a gen uh, test donation, so I obviously never get the money. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, we'll do a 40 hour stream uh, over Easter. Mm, next hippo we went. I'm motivated to do King of the Hippo again, like one player. Maybe uh, Clash of the Hippo and only invite three teams like Naps, MBL, Leary, Hart, and um, the Tyrants. And we'll let them play around Robin. Uh, or maybe like. Yeah, that would be an option. Like, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they have to play a best of nine against each other. Um, something like that would be an option. I have a lot of ideas. I will see how that goes. 40 hours, are you serious? Yes, I am. I think it would be cool to see players and have them draft from the remaining players. What? saying so um let's jump into oh obviously it's super bad for me that i'm missing with that start and um yeah so let's jump into sorry for missing the first minute that is chaos pit for you guys uh water is good for you guys uh all the fortresses very close here and everyone is trying to get some boars done and i was just thinking okay i can miss the first minute but absolutely not on this map you can see players are going for it quite early on already one board is to see for mbl who's playing mongols one board is to see for british player acm here one board is to see for warrior and now they're getting four more and it seems like stark is getting three boards with mongols so the best shot for him still no kill death and well one scout killed and now warrior after killing two sheep and can get out alive. What a ballsy move here, but not super efficient. But let's see how this boar will do now. And this scout is trying to get the third boar back into the CC. Oh, yeah, not the best kills here, but uh, yeah, so many questions going on before and I was answering them and I uh, completely forgot about the action start over here. Sorry for that, guys, but I think we catch most of the action. So this map is super crazy. We have all the four players pretty close together. Um, and then you kind of need to expand towards the outside to get to stone wood and all your other resources. You have only one patch of berries and some deers. And yeah, the timer on the top, you can see it is still running. And we are going for the quick tower rush here, as you can see. We'll go for some stragglers and then let's see how this goes. Starting in through the ledge means that this might be pretty deadly. Could go even for the kill here. Warrior with his scout being pretty bossy and killing another sheep here. Warrior now sees the... Um, the stone of MBL, but he knows that yeah he's on the other side so won't be too scared about that warrior now trying to go for the next tower the question is why is warrior going for teutons probably to have his villagers get into the tower in higher numbers that he wins every tower fight short distance means towers are super efficient close to it to see as well now kind of able to deny all those deer as well which would be pretty good for ACCM. And yeah, we'll get into a very, very scrappy game on this map, and I love it. Or even killing the sheep first. Trying to go for the deer. And actually, nice move by ACCM getting the deer, but doesn't really matter because he can't really get to the deer, anyways. Um, and MBL on towering as well. So tough start for ACCM. Losing his deer at the front, and let's go into his point of view. We'll not see that he will not get. And uh, that he will get towered on his stone and wood line. So he will have to go for that stone to somehow secure himself. 
Old spots are a bit unlucky for MBL. No, not at all. Yeah, hey, you're bad as well. No. I think it's absolutely reasonable how, how they're spawned. And now the tower's coming in. Let's take a look. 16 HP on that one. Now mass village just being pulled by MBL as well. They're going for the aggression here. Let's take a look. MBL trying to go for another house and that will be so many villagers dying here. We can compare Warrior with only 15 the lowest but that will drop for MBL and mainly for ACCM now as well. It's try, trying to go for the repair here and one village already down. Second one down now as well. Might even focus the third one. Let's take a look. Scout on down here in the TC. It was a Britain's Tower, so no Spanish bowling bonus. One villager going down for MBL, trying to micro back even further. And somehow ACM won that one. And not too many villagers died that day. I believe one for ACM, I think two for ACM and one for MBL. So that trade was actually reasonably well done for ACM and Victor over MBL. I thought he could have done so much better here, but had his villagers idle for such a long time. And maybe underpulled with it just even a bit. Okay, other side looks pretty safe. Stop trying to go for some random walling. It's going for the stable. Not sure about that. Trying to go for some walls, trying to go for some map control. If he controls like a quarter of the map, that would be super epic for him. Take a look, ACM. Seize the tower. Let's take a look if MBL has any reaction. Uh oh, that will be tough. He doesn't see that the villagers are coming in and getting pulled here, but they will be pulled. Probably not in time. The tower will go up, but that doesn't really matter. Trying to go for the fight here under the tower. Low HP villagers could jump in, the rest could fight. And indeed, that's a good engagement here for MBL and ACM. In a tough spot, not losing a villager. 3 HP and get some. Not on stone yet. Warrior is going on stone now as well. Stark not on stone as well. Four on gold though. That's quite surprising to me. Uh, don't tell me that Stark is on the way to. Don't tell me he's on the way to Castle Age already. Stark, he will dominate that game for sure. Look at that. He's up to Castle Age. Let's compare that to the other players. ACM, nine food. Nine food. Warrior, 100 food. And Golden Scout. MBL, 300 food. Okay, that looks reasonable for him. But after those tiers, uh, we'll be out of food as well. So I think, yeah, even going for double decks. So I think Stark will reach. Uh, I think he will have three TCs up and running before the next one clicks to cast late. That's kind of my prediction. He will, he will dominate that game so heavily. Oh, push of Warrior continues and ACM absolutely in trouble. Oh, MBL not walling his towers here. Archer's now sneaking around from ACCM. And that's an ugly tower here. Oh, uh, no, the scouts are coming in. They can't really get fought. And look at that, all the villagers are super low. One down, two down. Those two trapped, so four down for sure. Maybe five. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Four, five, six. I believe that was seven villagers. Four, seven villagers down there in like 15, 20 seconds. All of them super hurt from all the wolf fights. And suddenly he's at pop 15, 13 villagers to compare 30 of MBL. I think we already have decided our first and our fourth place, but. Maybe something funky gets on and Stark can absolutely decide who he wants to eliminate. If he thinks, okay, I want to play against Warrior and the one we won at the end, I better eliminate MBL then. So uh, even another village are going down. Look at that, pop 14. And yeah, that will be just so good. The knight now coming in from Stark. And yeah, he just played without any defense. He just was uncontested all along. And now defensive tower. Let's take a look. Maybe some villagers going down here. And MBL doesn't have the greatest defense. And there's one tower and now warrior coming in as well. And they could maybe take out some of those very low HP villagers. Maybe get MBL down a bit as well. 
Yeah, it's doing a good job. Has four towers pretty close. He's building a mill here as well. So his farming eagle will start. But that will take some time. Warrior now. Getting more farms. He might be up to calf legs pretty soon as well. And I see I'm now trying to go for some defensive towers as well. He has access to his wood again. But I mean, I was trying to tower and he's setting quite a bit of villages. Stark stone without his extra TC. That's a bit surprising to me. And we have 70 food, 34 villages, highest heal in the game. Now continuing with all his walls, building a second lumber camp. Now another big villager fight here. ACM really wants to yeah, get his wood and doesn't want to lose all his area. And it feels like MBL again, not the greatest micro. Doesn't really have anything close by and it's just a mess of the stone here. Stark now go even going for both so such a strong upgrade and yeah, I'm not even sure if the other players have double the decks. Okay, for town watch and 20 minute mark. I completely forgot about that, but we wish sure that ACM won't take the 20 minute mark. <laughs> Warrior now with the counter tower that I think over here was the one from MBL. So players really know how to be annoying at ACM. Won't have the happiest game ever for him. Uh, deleting the second lumber camp. I'm surprised that we don't see an extra TC from Stark yet. Warrior now with wheelbarrow, so no castle age timing for him as well. Let's take a look. MBL 50 food. Warrior 200 food. We have Stark at 100 food. Second. We'll build a second lumber camp for sure. And ACM Seagull can't be that good. He has two farmers, a lot of villages on stone. Two long distance, uh, three long distance on wood. Now scouting with one archer. And trying to tower himself against MBL, who's building a defensive tower there as well. So, um, yeah, tower cancelled. Stark so finally building an extra GC. And another tower, so that make that soon down to only one working farm ACCM oh god and that tower I'm not sure if he really wants to make more enemies here <laughs> it is it is a very interesting tower should build a house here if he doesn't want to get uh, fought down um, yeah, seems like he doesn't care so far And yeah, 20 minute mark. Oh no, Warrior is pretty good in it. Let's take a look, Warrior. Uh oh, he's going for the mass scouting strategy. Look at that. He's looking so much better than Stark. Oh, he's scouting out quite a bit as well. So that makes kind of sense. And Warrior though. Uh, let's take a look. My team maybe snack that first 20 minute mark. We only have 10 more seconds. And Stark, what's he doing? He's doing bloodlines and the plus one defense. Now finishing a TC though, and yeah, he was ahead in score. But I'm going to close on Stark, 20 more dollars on his. Side. On his balance. Something like that. Balance. Balance is a reasonable word for, for ending that sentence. I see I'm trying to expand his towers. I'm not 100% sure why. I think he should just... Send 15 villagers to the outside, delete his CC. I think that's the best strategy that he can go for. He can't really do anything here. Like, he will always get shut down from outside. Players have so much more tag, so many more villagers. And yeah, I was right. He has three TCs up and running before the next one clicks the castle age. So, Nostradamus nearly as a chick. Take a look, Warrior. Oh, who's host now? I think it's ACM, right? Yeah. What is he looking at? Ah, uh, not the greatest, not the greatest. Ready. Yay. Mandatum Rayton. Yay. Yay. 
SFM is he trying to expand? No, he's only trying to get himself some more room and sending more villagers to the front. But look at that herd village just being sent to the front again. Three towers. Uh, not really sure how great of an idea that is. Now trying to micro the herd and villagers back. Mm. Three TCs. Stark is in such a prime position. MBL though. Uh, now a second mill out. Let's take a look how you continue that. Warrior now up to it himself to Castle it. Uh, Warrior trying to get another tower up. Will be roughly at the same time like ACCM's tower over here a bit later. Let me all safe at home. Let's see what Stark will go for. He will actually go for knights. Bloodlines M plus one already being researched. Going for four stables. So he. Maybe things okay. I can eliminate a player before they can. Huh. Yeah, before ACM dies. So if Stark is now going for full attack on MBL, that would, wouldn't be a bad idea, I believe. Trying to fight down the towers. MBL only has like three spearmen, four spearmen, as it seems. Or three spearmen and one scout. And now trying to house wall a bit more. I want to see a siege workshop as well. Uh, we'll kill that scout in the back here. What is a warrior going for? Not much. Trying to expand some without post, but didn't find much in the at the outside. And Stark, what will he go for? Four stables now. And now he's running in and Spearman amount, it's looking at 6 at the moment. Uh, Stark might even get that TC. Oh no, that will be... No, he won't, right? 67%. HP are going down. Will MBL maybe lose his starting TC here? We're down to... 70% of the HP. 85% of the research. Oh, that will be get that will get dicey. He's trying to get the repair in. One village, uh, and no, no, he will he will do it. Yeah, but yeah, one more mana. I think could have done it. Uh, now the spearmen are coming in, and more knights. I think that's more villagers being sent to death. Actually, uh, not sure if that's a good idea. Send them towards the front. Um, wanted to get some more fire in, but now all the villagers will get out, out of the TC. And that means MBL most likely won't compete for the first place, but maybe needs to compete with ACM. But ACM is just playing so poorly. Look at that, he's still only at 15 villagers. After the big loss over here, I think he should have just retreated a bit more. MBL going for another TC, another two TCs. And Stark is going in and he will kill a lot of villagers. All the villagers which are not fit into TCs. Um, he's going for the two barracks pikeman defense. So I think his reaction is absolutely right. Warrior is going for the Monkrush castle ring up now. And he will Monkrush again Stark. I'm not sure that's the best idea ever. And or can he kill MBL well enough? I'm not sure. ACM, he needs to delete his CC, he needs to rebuild, but I'm not sure if he can ever get more than 2k points in this game. Start building another TC, up to 5 TCs pretty soon. Not going for more monks, I would think. Oh no, he's going for more knights. And the Monk Rush is coming from Warrior. Not sure why he would go for the Monk Rush. I think just booming would have been better. He has a defensive castle as well. He cannot die. He has so many towers out. I think just going for Imperial Age and hoping that Stark would have went for regression. Would have been so much better than ACM! No! Oh! ACM! No! Oh, that, that's the nail of the coffin. But no, as you can see, Stark doesn't want to go for ACM. He realizes ACM is a guy I want to play in the 1v1 in the end. I don't want to play MBL. So he keeps ACM alive and will go for, go for another raid here against MBL. Who, let's take a look, stop the Spearman production. 
or pikeman production. What does MBL have? Here's still 10 military. Where is it? Oh, over here. Uh, quite far out of position, if you ask me. And Stark. I think he should now maybe talk to Warrior that they should only attack MBL. But MBL is looking strong. Three defensive towers, two TCs up. Uh, let's see, one military pairing won't be, really be enough compared to 10 knights trying to smash it down. Now trying to go for an outpost. Quick, sweet wall here. So MBL is doing everything to keep those villagers alive. But yeah, it will be tough in the long run. What is Stark doing? Is he building more knights? Uh, he's going up in PLH. But the uh, rush is coming in. Defensive castle though will absolutely save him. Nothing that warrior can do against that. Now Monk's out of position. Need to get the converts in pretty quickly. Let's see warrior getting three monks to convert. They will get at least one convert. Three monks down and now the rest are running in. This is looking like Kind of even trade. All the knights are down now, but five knights in the way. Uh, in the way. Yeah, side of warrior now. Trying to reconvert the stock here. And now those three rams can maybe do some damage. Needs to repair that castle heavily. Maybe needs even to send all his knights back at the same time. He wasn't aware. And MBR got the attack. And now four rams. We can maybe do some damage here. Stark suddenly in trouble. And maybe he's just throwing this game by not booming and trying to yeah, intercept this game earlier. ACCM trying to stay alive. Eight moments in this very game. 100 years exactly this moment. And yeah, I believe this castle will stay alive. But it will get tough. Still two rams, maybe three soon on this castle. But no Bangor is out. Trying to go for more repairs. All the villagers down and this castle will indeed die. Not the best defense here by Stark and Sunny Warrior is pushing it in after not taking the 20 minute mark. Another defensive castle coming in and Stark just, yeah, taking a bad fight at a bad moment and therefore losing this castle and not the greatest repair micro afterwards. And suddenly, look at the points! Stark 4.8, Warrior 4.2, but I feel like the boom is still so much better for Stark. He is at 95 with Warrior only at 52. Maybe losing his MTC though might change everything. Going. Oh, that would be so deadly. And don't think that the PLH H upgrade and Castle H upgrade are the same. And don't think that three Rams won't do much damage. Stark might lose his MTC here. Trying to go for the mass repair now. Three Rams still going at it. What can he do? He's not sending enough villagers. And now giving it up. Stark will lose his MTC here. And probably didn't even notice it. And now look at his resources. So he goes in the bank, but yeah, he saw it and now clicked up instantly. And yeah, what a rookie mistake going up to MPL8 with the front TC. And it seems like, yeah, therefore it's sealed that ACM is getting lost. And now we still have a fight that Warrior still has a shot of killing Stark here or doing a lot of damage. Maybe together with MBL and Stark, kind of unprofessional play. What a throw. Oh yeah, maybe trying to kill the next TC. Could even maybe throw all his eggs into one basket and try to go for one TC snipe and hope that it's another MTC. But yeah, obviously he doesn't know that it was the MTC of Stark. Unless he looked at it and saw the uh, score jump of 180 points. Uh, not the best finding here. But now second TC, Mangolites are out. I think not having the greatest upgrade, let's see. No, not even having fletching. And we'll lose a lot of villagers here now. MBL soon to be having the highest villager, I reckon. Now only now getting fletching. 50 more years. This is still yeah, Warriors or Stark's game to win. Maybe even MBLs if he goes for a big knight uh, castle attack here. MBL now going for plus two knights. Or at least for the plus two defense. I'm not so sure if he's going for knights. And yeah, indeed, building some stables in the back. Maybe he's going for the big attack towards the middle. Start now reaching into the edge any moment. Uh, knight with 1 HP even converted. I remember so many knights out here by Warrior, and he only had one stable, so I'm not sure if he actually did build a lot of knights. Well, those were all Stark. That would be pretty blue, though. So many converts going on. MBL going for bloodlines, so Stark will have problems. 
Warrior now switching his target, knowing that Stark with Mangalize and two castles up will be very tough to break. Bot can arrow now coming in chemistry as well. So he's now going for MBL, but MBL has a defense. Next castle here. Beautiful position, but Stark sees it in time. He's pulling villagers. Mass Mangalize. I think Stark will take it still, being with POH. But Warrior. He's getting the converts, he's getting the raisings as well. He is catching up and if MBL now decides to possibly go for... Yeah, raiding Stark in the back and is just sacrificing himself. You know, he knows he cannot get first, he knows he cannot get last. So just dying here and offering himself would actually be an option to push Warrior ahead of Stark. Would be an interesting funny move, but I'm not sure if MBL thinks that way. Because obviously it's uh, a very weird scenario. ACM, why is he trying to tower rush here? Just, uh, yeah, I'm not happy how ACM played it out. We are down to 15 years here. Traps now coming out for Stark. And let's see if Warrior can maybe get some more kills against MBL. Trying to get more converts at least. 11 more years. Elite Mangala is now kicking in. It looks like Stark can still take the win. But Warrior still pushing in. 500 more. And the others now fighting with all wills. That's so good for Warrior. 8 more years. Can he maybe get enough kills here on all those villagers? Now suddenly 300 points only. More villagers going down, MBL doing everything to push Warrior, but not enough villagers out. MBL should send everything to the front. Only 200 more points. Stark is pushing though with all his elite mango dice. Or is he really pushing more villagers to the front? Warrior, only one more year and Stark is taking it. Twice. $40 for Stark. ACCM out. Ah. Oh, an unfortunate start for ACM, and then he just should have evacuated. Delete your TC, get villagers up, and maybe with those points, MBL would have still gotten third place. But at the end, I think he could have gotten up to like 3k score, maybe 3.5k. But in the eighth end, that was a close one. Warrior, yeah. If MBL would have thrown like some more villagers, that would have been. Win for Warrior. He had the most kills, as you can see in the end. ACM seven uh, units killed only. Thirty-four converts for Warrior. One or two villagers seems to be the right amount in those games. And yeah, I want to see the timeline again. Taking that away. Oh, ACCM not taking the highest. No, and look at that. He's still feudal eight. Note up in here and yeah. A lot of fighting going on, losing all the army of Stark here. You can see that's the attack of Warrior coming in. And Stark losing everything. Now we're down to the last three players. We have MBL, we have Stark, and we have a uh, Warrior? What did I say? MBL, Warrior, and Stark. No ACCM. So, let's update the money a bit. Stark, up to a strong 80 now. Overtaking Tato. And we have ACCM out. Uh, he's giving 1x to Warrior Students. Which was an interesting choice. 1x to Stark's Mongols. And 1x to MBL's, I believe, for the Mongols as well. I think so. So now, three remaining players. Warrior, still without a single dollar earned in this tournament. So freaking weird. He played now six games, no, five games, and didn't win any of the 10, yeah, money chunks. Ah. Yes. Uh, so tough. Uh, Warrior host. Uh, let me... Not sure about the map. Um, uh, let me say MBL has it. It is as of the Um Oh, Warrior. Not getting the kills. In. 
Is there a grand prize for the winner? No. Our next game is going to be in YouTube or something. Uh, what do you mean? We will continue streaming here. King Marv, by the way, the guy in the chat, won yesterday. What if Warrior defeats the other guy in the last match, but has lowest score? Uh, then he will not get money. Uh, three players. Yes. <laughs> Warrior is saying, I hate all games. Damn. I think here is instead of conquest. Yes. Hey guys, next game will start pretty soon. Okay, guys, <clears throat> let's catch up the chat. Want to play with the biggest score at 21 minute just redesign to win? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that yeah, would be interesting, but no, no, that's not how going to work. <clears throat> someone resigns before 20 minutes obviously the other guy will get um, 
all the forty forty dollars. Back today to one minute. <clears throat> okay, second to last game of the day. Three players left. It is only Warrior, MBL, and Stark. Take a look at civilizations. We have MBL playing Brit, Stark very much in the middle here playing Celts. And Warrior playing the Mayans. Stark still having Kells. That was a bit surprising to me. Seems like he has them left. Yeah, indeed. So, um, okay. But he is so much in the middle. For all the guys who don't know the map, we are starting in a chaos pit in the middle. Players very close to each other. We are starting without gold. And then you have to kind of fight yourself out of the wood to get onto stone and gold. You have two tiles of stone. So some towering is an option, but not a lot. Brits, a weird choice since you can't go for a lot of archers early on. Um, Kelts, obviously very good to chop yourself out. And Marians, very good because you have la longer last resources. Means you can take more out of your 700 stone, have more deers basically. And that's pretty beautiful for you at the start. And yeah, you should never build your mining uh, lumber camp over here because it's longer distance. You should always build it at those those spots. Look at that; would be so bad. Oh yeah, warrior building a very bad lumber camp. Um, basically, on that map, you always want to build the lumber camp even one tile away, so you can do it a bit more efficiently. Let's take a look what Stark is doing. He has to run quite a bit as well. And that will be a lot of killing here in Fuel Age as well. Can't do the wall and what is Stark going for? He doesn't really know where the wood is. Shouldn't go over here, should more go towards the south. And yeah, that's a very bad llama camp. Right. I was going more to the top, yeah, he knows that he wants to shop over here. Maybe one tile to the left would have been even better, so he could shop on both sides. With only three tiles, here you have four tiles as well. Now we're trying to go for some. Um, Walling up as well. You don't have a lot of food either. Having two berry bushes and one patch of deers. And I think six sheep should be standard. Well, it seems like MBL stole some, but lost his scout in exchange. And yeah, indeed. Someone said just uh, teaming up against MBL would be an option here. And I think it would be the right decision. Probably MBL the favorite in every 1v1 Arabia coming after that. So if you want to have more money, I think Warrior and Stark should team up this very game to give themselves a better chance uh, for the last game. Maybe, yeah, let's go for double, like one player going scums, one player going scouts or something. On to MBL, but I didn't see that kind of communication yet. Who won yesterday? It was King Marv. May and special text count also for wood? I believe so, yeah, indeed. So that might be unfortunate for him. He needs to chop a bit longer. The yeah, MBL already won straight through. And while you're still chopping. But maybe I'm not microing properly. Let's see who is going for what units first because yeah, as we all know if someone can get up like four scouts or something, it could be so deadly. I think Goth might even be an option here. Um can they be or militia? I believe so, yeah. That would be epic as well. 60 gold left, I believe so, yeah. 15 gold for militia. Or is it? I think they even cost only 13. So, yeah. 4 MLA would just be so deadly. 
Especially if your enemy can't really build archers. Mine can now for stock at the stone. And defensive tower. Trying to go for some more walls. And should be going for tears now pretty soon as well. And maybe even the rest of berries. Let's see about that. Warrior, not going for that far away, dear. Yes, he is. And not microing here as well. Not very pleased how players are uh, playing it to get outside. For example, MBL only needs to go for 180 more. We have stock at 200 more and Warrior at 300, I believe. Oh no, maybe even 400. <laughs> so more, more than you. He still has more left to chop. The only good thing is that you can have like more villagers working on diagonal trees to, to make an argument for that, but in general I think it's it's way worse. And we are going for a lot of walls, but excluding his berries here somewhat. I'm not sure if that's great. He can build a mill like over here and send two villagers, but that's the only option that he could go for for, uh, for now. Or are we now going for horse color before starting to farm? I like that a lot. Maybe, oh, now going for the barracks. So maybe going for the spearman rush. Or anticipating that the others will go for scouts. And indeed, Stark is going for scouts. What is MBL going for? Uh, seems like he will chop out first before he builds an archery range. Maybe he should have went for two archers, some skirms, and then would be out in time anyways. 130 wood for left for him to be just working on that tree. And second defensive tower here by Stark. I'm not so sure if I like Stark's build up so far. I hate Warrior's build up only because of the wood camp and as he's farming heavily before going on to yeah, berry bushes reasonably well. Look at that. That's just unnecessary resting so much there. Very defensive archery range here by MBL. Normally you see like a house or blacksmith over here and the archery range at the front. For serve more mobility with those. It's dark. Maybe if he chops out and is able to scout everything outside, that could give him the boost for the money. Uh, in roughly 8 minutes. 80 more wood for MBL here. Oh, we are sending so much. And yeah, roughly 300 wood to go for him. Sending the Spearman back. That's his first military unit, if I see it correctly. No, he has two, but that's one of only of his eels left. And. Market now coming up, so that means maybe Stark is going for. Stark Uh, he's going for castles. Uh, I mean. Probably. He has now a second building, so then Wolf is just on the food. Uh, yeah, we won't, most likely won't see him going for boat riders as well. Maybe selling some. And he's still producing more villagers. Let's see about that. And where are all his scouts? If he wants to attack some or if he wants to just keep scouting all the middle. And 80 wood now. Let's see. 30 wood left for him. MBL at the same time at 20 wood. So those two will be out pretty soon. Could pay tribute to gather points. No, you cannot tri tribute to your enemies. So that's not an option here. One eagle down for warrior. Uh. Mm. What is he going for? Let's take a look. Warrior. Reasonable resources, but still without a market as well. I'm trying to get one up. And MBL, he has nice resources. And should be clicking up any second. Indeed. So players going for the castle age approach. Now going outside here is MBL, should go for gold pretty soon and then we should see him go for a lot of castles and now I want to see, oh, second barracks coming up, or first barracks actually for MBL, and Stark's vision should be pretty sick, as you can see he's sending the scouts out and maybe should have saved that idea a bit longer. How, lo how far did our one true god, lord and savior, doubt go? Out in the first round, indeed. After a not very convincing performance and a doubt castle. 
Stark now going for gold. MBL seems like he will be stuck on his own base now going for a lot of gold. So we'll see him going for archers maybe. Maybe some booming. It's a more of a defensive game here. Warrior going for archer range now. Should get into archers pretty soon as well, but only now clicking up and that's a solid two minutes later. And the other Stark now going for the defense upgrade, so that might even be some knights for him. Three more minutes left, and it seems like oh Warrior going for the tower rush here. Not 100 percent sure why that is an option for him. Um maybe wants to pressure the TC of Stark later on. He's just caring about scouting as much as possible. Uh, will he lose a villager? Doesn't look like it. Is sending three villagers back. I think that TC didn't need to, uh, that farm didn't need to be deleted. But yeah, not very important. No spearmen out for MBL and a more passive game than the other game we saw. Uh, the other three players left were going for scouts, skirms and scouts I believe yesterday. So yeah, quite different for sure. And yeah, it's so ugly to wall the tower without uh, yeah, with no wall mod. You need to build like four houses around it. And yeah, first extra TC, does he have any army at the moment at 8 military? So he's building something. Sells for archers. <coughs> Sorry. And some spearmen out as well. Ready. Should be either military. Is he showing me? Oh, because they were moving. Okay, makes sense. No worry, up to Castle He has a lot of finish some stone, so. And he's only 50 foot away from getting to the outside. Meanwhile, we have Stark building a TC, and we are already having two TCs out. And it feels like Stark with his map exploration. And maybe even a kill against the villager here. We'll get first place again. And yeah, this guy will get a lot of money in this tournament, as it seems. And 20 minute mark, getting first prize again. Trying to go for in, in for some raids. Let's take a look at the achievements. How much points did you get? Uh, exploration. Look at that. He has 600 more points against Warrior just by exploration. Uh, 400 points. 440 points more. So yeah, he would have MBL ahead when it comes to non-exploration. Uh, well, if you yeah, just uh, discount the exploration. But MBL, just knowing how to push points and make it, yeah, exploiting it beautifully. MBL, more going to be the guy who wants to go into the finals, as it seems, and play the last one we won. Oh, yeah, now finally on the outside. Finally, that was so late. MBL, he doesn't have a lot of vision as well, as it seems. Yeah, very little scouting. Lost his scout early on, obviously. A spearman running around has way more farms. He can go for a second barrel patch as well. Now fighting against the scout here. Plus one defense might hurt a bit. Well, here's the castle of warrior coming up. Not built yet. Oh, and those knights catching warrior of guard. Good start for stop. And now the big question is how they will try to continue this house wall now by warrior. And looking better and better for Stark, going for three TCs on the outside. Why does Warrior still not have enough stone for a castle? There's one extra TC, two, three extra TCs. Okay, that makes kind of sense. And build the tower there, so he needs to buy stone if he wants to build a castle. He's heavily on gold now, so that's an option. And we are going for full boom, as it seems, pulling the siege watch up in the middle now. Pulling some monks even, so that will be Monkras. And yeah, as we all saw it, oh, even crossbows out now. And yeah, that will be super ugly for Shark. Uh, let's see, going for manual defense. It's actually an option. And what does MDL click? Oh, that's quite some speed. Ready. 
Sorry for that. We're gonna break again. And now, cross the man, let's take a look. No, bot can arrow just yet. It's going for more magnets. Has 500 stone as well. So could control some area with the castle. Maybe in the face of Stark. Oh, yeah, quite far behind. Which account pretty even for everyone. So that's not very efficient or like not the uh, big difference maker just yet. That's all coming in from behind there for start. And building another TC up to 5 soon, but maybe down to 4 soon. Because those Magnals will absolutely be not stopped by Stark here. It's only Night Tech. Uh, but it's totally fine to lose in like a middle area. The uh, only problem at the moment would be those farms. Should I actually send the three villagers home? Uh, because he will never save that TC. MBL pushing in, but I think MBL will also. Yeah, sometime looking to PLH. Not yet, though. Warrior. Not looking to PLH either. And Stark. They are quite far away from it as well. Trying to get some more eco up, but. I certainly not enough farms. Now going for some scorps in the defense. Not really sure if I like that a lot. Yeah, that would be reasonable against Cross, so I think they're even outranged by one. Yes, indeed. And now losing his Sun TC. I believe this time he didn't research Imperial Age upgrade. Which is on the outside for Warrior running. <laughs> and Stark trying to get some more. Okay, scouting until then, turning the knights around. And now just camping the hill with some siege. I think that's a reasonable idea. Let's take a look. Maybe get some attacking. Oh, reasonable shot. Uh, one item of enemy armor now coming in though. Let's see if the three scorpions can do enough damage. Maybe I'll trying to avoid that. 10 damage per shot. Is Stark overextending here? I believe so. Uh, yeah, that, that's just not very good. And yeah, we lose his three scorpions there. Basically for nothing. Creating some HP off of MBL, but that's not very important. Expanding towards the south though. Trying to ward the top as well. So Stark will go into the very long game and this game will only last 10 more minutes. Or you now clicking up to MPO8. Let's see if he's going for mass eagles or what his option will be. He didn't go for the castle yet, I believe. Where is he? He's at 400 stone, so yeah, he didn't want to buy it. Didn't go for that stone either. I'm trying to get some more walls done, but actually it is already protected by trees. And yeah, then we will see what's going on. MBL's push will absolutely stop here. He cast the two magnets behind walls. The tower helping out. There's just no chance in hell MBL will ever break that. Unless he gets like... Very, very high tech traps, rams, and even then, I think rams won't do much. It has to be traps, and even in high numbers. So, and we are now on the way to MPH as well. Let's take a look into Stark. We will pick up any second as well. What will he go for? Will he go for seed? And obviously, it will be tough to find a good area to attack. He's trying to scout some area. Look at his vision on the map, it's quite great. He sees everything here, has a lot of intel still over here. And now all three players on the way to MPL8. Trying to get a castle up, trying to get a siege watch up. At the same time, what does MBL see? Only this push in the direction. Didn't see anything here. Now trying to get a castle up. And... In the TC. Uh, that will be intercepted by Stark for sure. Maybe the trap will start soon in that area. Uh, still very tough to call who will get what place. And at the moment the highest score, but that's mainly because he went for a lot of castle aid units. We'll lose maybe the crossbow here. Not even that. And it heavily depends on what warrior is going for. He's going for elite eagles. And yeah, that's 
bad for NBL. Because Star can't get raided. And NBL is completely open. Well, not completely open, but so he can run through the TC. And he doesn't have anything to fight against uh, Elite Eagle Warriors. Marion. And plus two already on them. So Carson now coming up. And if they get El Dorado, they'll just smash NBL alive. Now trying to get a university up. 100 more years. Roughly 8 minutes. Plus 4 defense now as well. I think Warrior should maybe hide his tag. Is there an option of MBL switching into champions? Not really, if you ask me. I think he has to go for Arbeles. So he may be going for. Oh, and we missed some action here at this side. This castle will not go up. And. Yeah, that's super bad for MBL. This TC won't help out too much. I'm sending him some more villagers. Maybe the castle will go up after all. This villager, yeah, won't get attacked by the Mangalore because the ram is too close. That being introduced at AOC, that Mangalores don't attack units when you're uh, when you have own units close by. So we will get into the trap tennis. And now Eagle Warriors are coming in, and that's so bad for MBL. I think Warrior will get the score lead here. Now, nice, beautiful balls, but still would be open if he takes a villager to chop over that. Or maybe single ram could obviously mean no defensive possibilities for MBL as well. Take a look. More Eagle production, and yeah, he's going for the Siege Workshops. MBL will have troubles. Going to this point of view, what does he have at the moment? He's just pulling traps. It feels like MBL will get lost, but we are still very far away from that moment. We still have six more minutes to play. Stark going for the Mangalore defense here, and he's doing a great job not taking any unnecessary losses. And that means the other two guys are killing each other. And yeah, that house needs to be repaired, or another house needs to be built behind that. Cap Rams now coming in, Eldorado plus two attack. Warriors going for the full frontal. Let's take a look. More houses, MBL is trying to buy himself more time. What is he going for? Still no tag. And he is kind of out of gold. Don't have any village on gold at the moment. More Rams coming from this side. And this is looking so bad. Stark now going for Road Riders. What is he doing? Should he be attacking? I think he should be attacking MBL, not going for Warrior. MBL now trying to go for the Arbalest defense, but it will be so tough. So many Eagles knocking at the door, so many Rams around as well. And MBL needs to fall back. I think building those Arbalest at the front was a mistake. He needs to club them up. He needs to have like 40, 60 Arbalest. Very close. It's only 50 more years. MBL lowest in score. Warrior highest in score. This may be Warrior for the first time ever getting highest in score and getting some money out of this tournament. Or is Stark maybe snagging it in the end as well because he's pushing in with Road Riders. He's pushing in with traps and ramps as well. Feels like MBL's defense will be super, super tough he needs to have everything clumped up he needs to wall up and he needs to hope that people are wasting all their armies but it's not looking like it the push is real we have 40 more years roughly more houses he would love to have the possibility to build stone walls now to buy himself more time but the game mode is not allowing that for him that means more houses dying more resources lost as well siege rams now being researched and that will just ram all those houses down instantly so no production of arbalest mbl is not getting into skirmishes as well he is typing in the gg knowing that he will be last now that's a fight only warrior against stark and to see who's getting first points and stream is ended because mbl was host bastard move from him so mbl resigned and ended and left the game. That means we didn't see the last two minutes. Um, I could insult him, but... <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, we'll just ask Warrior and Stark who had the highest points in the end. And... Uh, not really sure what I can say to that. Um, now we have the finals. Players left after that. 
Take a look at the achievements in Thailand of NBL. Poorly played, wrong strategy choice. And yeah, rightfully out of the tournament. Oh, I didn't even see it. I'm sorry to do that. I think they continue playing. Uh, I, I would. If they didn't, I will split the price money between them. I think they are still in. And. Ooh, getting really pissed here. <sighs> A bit out of words. Dark now out of Celts and Warrior out of Mayans for the last one we want. Warrior one. And no time limits. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what I can, can say about that. So Warrior won in the end, so it's good that he gets at least 20 points, uh, 20 dollars. And Stark got the middle one, so he's up to 100. Um, Um, yeah, so let's just push it. But I will calm myself down and then we have the finals of Stark against ACCM. Um. Okay, they're jumping into the game, so now it's finals time, guys. Beep, 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 beep,
was euer. Die Pizza, die Pizza, die was euer. Die Pizza, die Pizza, die was euer. Die Pizza, die Pizza, die was euer. Okay guys, Spectre started the last game of a very long tournament here. Warrior against Stark playing it out in the high day here on Arabia. And it has to be a very entertaining game for sure. Stark, obviously the heavy favorite, is will be one we want to rating at the moment is 2.2k. Warrior at 1860. Should go heavily in his favor, but people aren't very experienced in Fuel Age Swords, so that might be something that Warrior can count on. Maybe this time. We will see and find out because this will be the last game of this very tournament. We are excited to see. We will have no time limit here. The guy with the higher points at 20 minutes will get. Uh, oh, we have interesting civilizations as well. And the guy with the higher points at 20 minutes will get $20, and the winner overall will get $20 on top of that. So. Now we will see how this goes out and Stark here in purple, starting with the hunt. And on the other side we have Warrior playing Japanese, an interesting choice. If you ask me, maybe he wants to go for an M&A rush or something like that. Remember, starting with 100 gold means that you can build 3 M&A without going for gold. But he has a very bad map. Look at his wood spot. Oh, 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 oh. That will be ugly for him. And... Huh. Let's see... How oh, they will play this out. Um, better good uh, wood spot and gold spot for Stark here. It feels like he can control this game very nicely. Warrior needs to play something aggressive with this bad map. Very far away wood. Remember, you can't really wall anywhere. So he has to build defensive towers and his gold is exposed at the front. Will be tough for him to front boards as well, nice deers even close to the berry, so it looking everything looking great for Stark here. Beating oh, multi sheeping though, so not absolutely on point. And didn't find all his sheep yet, let's take a look at his exploration. Did find one board, did find another board, two more sheep. Remember it's fuel age, so you have the plus two on your scout vision, it should be pretty easy find here. And uh, yeah, seems all reasonable. Why did Warrior go for Japanese? He had so many different sills as an option. Let's take another look here. Oh yeah, Japanese, like you could have had still Huns, Britons, Aztecs. Not sure if Aztecs, Vikings would be better in my opinion, but yeah, he simply went for Japanese here. We want to have the element of surprise. Oh, preventing multi shipping, I want to say, but then went for the multi ship anyways. Not the greatest ball or either. And yeah, very scrappy game by Stark so far. And yeah, we need to see more of those moves to keep up the height. Warrior, he might even lose his scout. That would be so bad running into the TC, but taking it in the last moment and still 45 HP. Great job. Uh, not the great positioning of the mill, if you ask me. Oh, 
a second ball coming in and I want to see what players will pick as their strategy. Looks like you will go for some scouts. Uh, Having some more map vision, having the threat always in the head of your enemy, and Warrior will go for the barracks. Um, so that might be MA. Uh, MA against Scouts is quite a reasonable trait, especially if you're Japanese. Second Born now coming in, but still no buildings, so maybe Stark will just go for Arches as well. Absolutely an option for him. Pie from wood now. Still not in gold. Not too many villages on food, I believe. Now go for Archie production. Let's take a look, Warrior. What is he going for? Is he going for MA? Indeed. So militia out now. Oh, one villager getting attacked here, but might get trapped by two villagers. No. Nope. And Stark is indeed going for scouts now. Food production need to be running from Warrior. To really keep it up here with all these MA. They're costly in food. He can produce three and then do MA upgrade without going on gold. That's probably why he went for this very strat. Uh, then we could have went for Aztec as well. Did they start with 150 gold? That would be interesting to know. Third militia Stark even going for double bit X, so he's playing it very defensively. Oh, even getting some more hits done, and I think it's looking reasonably well for Stark. Still, the militia not out. I think now they need to start running MA upgrade. He is wasting time now, I believe. He's going for the very aggressive. And yeah, they could, should have been out on the map now already. Scouts now for Stark. Let's see if Stark saw what. Yeah, he needs to know about Warrior Strategy. Eight minutes into the game, now three scouts out. Did he. Material research, real barrel, I'm not 100% sure. I think it has to be like 175 food on a farm. 250, yeah, so he has real barrel even. And he's going for more deer, so that's looking pretty reasonable for him. Might need to pull the villagers pretty soon though. Now going for gold is warrior. He and his spearman coming in. And we can see the first attack. Maybe if Stark mismanaged that, we have a great attack here for Warrior, but 3 MA still. They can do a lot of damage. Let's see, those scouts were already hurt, but not fighting at the moment. The scout not in there as well. Warrior not taking the best engagement here. And is running back and licking his wounds without doing too much, losing the scout maybe even. And that's the loss, a lot of lost HP here. Do we see a second archery range not coming up yet? He now we can see Warrior sending everything back when it comes to his scouts. Four scouts at home pretty soon, five even. He is now attacking the spearman with his villagers and the scouts going for the MLA. Let's see if he's taking a reasonable engagement. Now going for the spearman as well. That's pretty good for Warrior, but now down to two MLA, one MLA only. And I think not a single villager went down. So that was a full army of Warrior. Traded against three scouts. Has to be better trade for our player from Brazil here. Now going for two extra archer ranges. Now with the scouts out, horse color only now coming up for Warrior. He's now switching on to archers as well. Spearman defense coming in. And this is looking tough for him indeed. Horse color means he wants to go for more MA maybe. I think he should switch into mainly archers. Should get another archer range out here. That Spearman is well positioned. Another house and where should he, he might even want to consider building a tower over here to protect his gold because the pressure will come in for sure. Stark not getting his units at home, he's just sending them to the front. Seven villages on gold here. Uh, normally you go for six if you want to go to Archer Rangers. Maybe he wants to go for Blacksmith upgrade as well, so yeah, that makes sense. Warrior now going for the second Archer Range, like we want to see from him. Going for the Deers in the back as well. I would love to see a second, maybe even a third Lumber Camp actually. Especially with Japanese. Now finally fix that villager. I want to see Fletching as well. Not out yet. Adding more scouts. Skirms as well, and he will attack the middle. And I believe that Warrior still doesn't have the great eco. 
Imagine now coming in with Stark with the block formation. Didn't show his tag yet. Does Warrior even know that Stark is on Archer Ranges? No, he does not. Has no idea about that. Only scouts shown yet. Warrior has a lot of archers out though. But no. Oh, yes. The blackness. Not sure. Let me see. No fletching out. And now we have Stark moving in. He has one more villager and he's going for the full frontal attack. Oh, Miss Rally there. Trying to run around a bit more. Warrior. Still no upgrade. Fletching for Stark is finished. Maybe he can take the fight here on the hill. Oh, oh that might be good for Warrior. No, Stark is not, still very aware of it. Points so much better for Stark. Let's see if they want to take an engagement. Beyond Spearman taking a full volley here, trying to split around a bit, and that was a very unfortunate thing for Warrior. But well, Michael out of it. One Spearman left, only very low HP. And now suddenly out of Spearman, this is looking so bad for Warrior. Let's take a look at only 15 minute mark. Might all the archers go down? Actually, no defense upgrade. Stark running in, and that's a beautiful move. You're getting so many hits done. Two archers down now, pulling all the villagers. More archers in there as well. Now taking another hill advantage. Another Spearman sacrificing his life. As you can see, Bloodlines now coming in, plus one defense and wheelbarrow. Uh, Warrior here in a very dicey situation. Stark in full control now going for the wood line. Or is he? Yeah, he is. And now sending everything, maybe even adding a second stable. Yes, indeed. And we can see all the killing here. It's looking so tough for Warrior. Two more villagers down and running around, not losing a single archer in exchange. Does he maybe want to take the big fight here? Not just yet. He's killing another spearman. And those scouts will be so deadly here. Plus one defense. Where's Bloodlines? No Bloodlines just yet. Even Stephen's armor for the archers. Scouts now coming in again and they perform so well. Unless they just run back and forth. Three more villagers for Stark. Kill to death ratio 15 to 5. Stark 10 military ahead as well. Now could even attack at the front. Nice defensive tower from Warrior, but the threat still is so real at the site. Three more minutes. So we see who is getting the 20 minute mark, but looks like he will be stuck unless he throws most of his army. Now Tom Watch coming in, Bloodlines finally. I think he will wait for Bloodlines and then will uh, take a multi-pronged attack. Will attack from this room, maybe even before Bloodlines. He knows he can take that fight. He has a whole bonus. He has plus one defense trying to round it as well. And that's a lot of kills here. Going in further and further, still only plus one attack, no defense upgrade, more archers going down. And now uh, um, we might even see the GG before the 20 minute mark because so much more armies coming in. We can see Padded Archer now finally and plus one attack even for Stark, so many more scouts. Warrior still fighting with all his villagers, so many archers still left. More Spearman coming in, but that's so many more archers and indeed before 20 minute GG. So that's double price for Stark. What a convincing game by Stark here. Quickly go throw over the achievement. Kills it's just so brutal. Oh man, I think hands are just so much better than the um the Japanese here. His MA attack he lost some time and then took a poor engagement at the very start. And Stark just took a convincing win and this is our champion together with King Marv yesterday of Elimination of the Hippo. Number one. And in in the end, he will get a solid $140. Warrior, although he was in the finals, only got $20. Tito was 60, Lyria and Emil was 20 as well. Doubt and horsepower going home empty handed.